Hey everyone, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Quick shout out to my sponsors, Royalty Honey. Keep it hard, guys. And if you don't want to be on my channel and you want to stay home, make sure you hire Attorney Rosenberg. On today's episode, we have Lucky. Welcome to Indicted TV, Lucky. What to do, what to do. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. I'm excited to hear your story. Oh, man, um, I'm excited to tell you guys. Yeah. So tell me, let's start. Tell me uh, where you're from, where you grew up, mom, dad, the inside of your house, brothers, um, sisters. So my family is from Mexico. Okay. Mexico, Juarez, parte. Juarez in Chihuahua. Okay. Juarez in Chihuahua. Um, my mom, uh, she, I was, she said she was three uh, three months. She had like three months left to have me. And then she, uh, you know, she had to like suck in her belly because I guess you're not supposed to come through, you know, be pregnant or whatever. So she went and had me in Dallas. And then when we were out there in Dallas, Texas, um, <clears throat> Uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I moved whenever I was uh, eight months to take me out the dope game or take me out, you know, the, the crazy, the drug games and all that and everything that was going on out there. And uh, went to uh, New Mexico. Yeah, okay. New Mexico. Started when you were eight there. months. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, eight years. Eight years, eight years old. Years, yeah. okay. I was like, damn, you remember? Yeah, Shit. no, eight years old. Eight years old, seven, eight years. Eight Just old. you and your mom. Me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. Okay, so mm-hmm. you, your mom, and your sister. So you, you grew up with both parents in the house. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, blessed. Was, I was blessed. Yes, yes. you know, it, it's it, not everybody is blessed to mm-hmm. have both parents. Yes. Um, did you have like a normal, was it like a normal home? Your parents worked? Oh, yeah, school? hard work. Yeah, and the, the, the average is the most humble, uh, the most humble, uh, you know, mecanos, 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 you know, my gente is gente. So it's just like an amazing home, amazing, you know, but, you know, we grew up with nothing. We grew up with nada, man. Uh, you know, yeah, we grew up with nothing, you know, just the average, you know, Mexican family. family yeah. Okay. So you from Juarez, you saying you moved to Dallas, you were born in Dallas, and then you moved to New Mexico. Yes. And that's where you grew up your rest of your, your, yeah. your mm-hmm. rest of your life. Yeah, I've been everywhere, Cali, El pa- uh, Texas, back and forth, El Paso. But, but as yeah. far as like when you were yeah, growing up. Yeah, I was up. raised, yes sir, okay. yes ma'am, I was raised. So um, you did. You went to high school, you graduated junior high, things like that. Or at what age did you see yourself kind of getting yourself into trouble? Because obviously you're an indicted, right? Yeah. So tell us like what age did you ever go to juvenile hall? <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing with me is, um, like, over there where I moved, there was a lot of really, like, white people. You okay. know, it was a lot of, like, I think in my high school, there was, what, like, one black person in my high school, you know, and a lot of rich people out there. But it was, uh, I guess it was still in my blood, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> yeah, I guess it was still in my blood. So, at uh, how old was I? Um... 13 i had these twin these twin these twin friends man and they took me to go get some some weed from the weed man or whatever man and uh i went in his little his little um condo or whatever he had and uh it was just nice to me you know i come from nothing i didn't have no toys i had to go to the neighbor's uh to the neighbor's uh uh house to go play with his toys and stuff you know we never had nothing you know and uh um shit man just Shit, man, I just faced that. Yeah, what was I just saying? I just, I just that you were go with your head, your two, your two twin friends that they. Oh they yeah, took yeah, my bad, to. my bad. See, I got a little nervous. I'm a little. I gotta shake it off a little bit. <laughs> you got it, you got nah, it. but yeah, I went over there, and uh, that's whenever that little, that little um, vision got stuck in my head. You know, it was like, damn, I seen he had like a nice TV, a, a, a bad little chick, man, and uh, they set up, and I was like, man. I, I want to do this. And how old were you? You said like 13, you I said? I was like 12, 12, 13 years old, man. Okay. And, uh, and that's when it all started. That's when it that's all, all the way, started. That's usually yeah. around the time. Yeah. Like, vago, pues ahí esa, a los yeah. Esa, esa edad, you're either going to fucking be okay or you're not. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you started smoking weed at 13? Nah, I was like 10. Oh, 11, snap. 12 years when I started smoking weed, yeah. Okay. Started smoking weed. Uh, we used to break in the houses to smoke in there <laughs> with all the little white kids. We'd, we'd literally break in the houses just to chill in there and smoke weed. and i really was my lot my little friends were little thieves I, I was never really a thief like that man but uh they would go in there and f- do what the hell they do and and if we didn't have the shit to steal we'd steal the batteries out of the remote controllers you know what i'm uh, saying <laughs> like, uh, like hey. something take off with something get some batteries for the rc cars or something you know like yeah. No, no, no eras maldicioso todavía. Nah, nah, nah. You just did it because you were doing it with your friends. <clears throat> no, honestly, you know, I was raised right. I really was. My mom and dad did a good job. It's just, 
uh, man, ever since a little kid, I was always just, you know, building forts, jumping off of trees, man. Uh, you know, I grew up skating, man. I grew up skating, snowboarding. Our schools down there where we're from, uh, every Tuesday, they would let us go to the uh, to the ski area. And we'd go mm -hmm. ski area. And, and every Tuesday, all the schools, at like I think it was like at 12 o'clock, everybody would get released. And it was uh, like five bucks to go to the mountain and I think five dollars to rent all the all the uh you know everything Big yeah equipment. yeah so it's like 10 bucks all together usually it costs like 80 90 100 bucks no, to go up to the, yeah. yeah to go and then all the schools and you know how cool just, is that yeah 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 oh, i suck yeah, i wouldn't even, even dare especially yeah. now that i'm old oh no yeah yeah <laughs> so okay so did you graduate high school did you go to high school i got uh i got expelled Tell us why. Tell shit. us why you got expelled from high school. <laughs> you want me to be real with you? This guy, I don't even know how to say this, but we we're sitting there, and um, I was like, I was, I was always a calm, collected guy that you know, respectful. Like I said, my mama and dad, they did a good job raising me, you know, respectful man. But uh, I just had, I just had something in there. I was always a daredevil, I guess you could say. And uh, we were sitting. Vida, te yeah, yeah, yeah. We were sitting there. And uh, this girl named, uh, I don't even know if I should say her name, but you I'm going to say, say her name. Huh? This girl, don't worry. Yeah, yeah this girl, name. this white girl, she, was, <laughs> she, was, uh, she came back and she's seated by the seat or whatever, man. And uh, they were all, oh my gosh, she's hot. And I was sitting there writing my little lyrics and stuff. And all the little white boys were all, man, I dare you to take a picture. I'll take take, take a picture. And I was like, man, I ain't, I ain't got none of that time. And, and another, I dare you, and everybody's like, I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll give you 20 bucks. And I was like, man, give me that camera. I literally turned like that, took a picture of her, and went back to doing what I was doing, man. And I guess she told the, uh, she told the, uh, the, 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 the principal and everybody, and I got in trouble for whatever reason. But it, the only reason why I, I got out of that trouble because that next week that same girl got caught with a teacher in the in the jacuzzi. Oh my god! Yeah, and like whatever it was, that they were, teacher. Yeah, yeah, the teacher. And the little girl and, and, fucking and, little fast ass. Yeah, so they expelled me for that shit, man. And then um. I got, I went to the next school, you know, I went to another school, and then I got, you know, suspended from there, too, and I ended up just going to homeschool. I tried to get homeschool, and I pawned my mom's computer that she bought me to do homeschool, and oh I just... Oh, my God, uh, what did you pawn it for? Just to re-up. So you were selling weed? Yeah, 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 since a little kid, man. Since okay, a little kid. okay. Since a little kid, I was always the weed man since a, since a little kid, 13 years old. Like, uh, to be honest with you, it started from uh, smoking. You know, I was always smoking. I was always rolling fat ass joints, fat ass joints with all the white kids and stuff, man. Fat ass joints, and uh, so I was always the guy smoking weed, man. At what? You know, at the time, you know, now it's crazy. Now you could ten, eleven, three. You didn't get any type of drug these days. Back in the days, at least, you know, it was a little bit more difficult. People mm -hmm. had a lot more, a little more respect, you know, and yeah. like you know, we weren't just selling it to just damn everyone, man. But yeah, uh, I was about about that age right there, man. Just so, right so you there. didn't graduate high school? Nah, I, I uh, actually got sent to a boot camp youth challenge academy in roswell man and uh how was, was like, that for you it was amazing what did you go to juvenile hall over it first or you just got sent to boot camp y yeah like, was, a, like a good boot camp not like a boot camp as a juvenile it was it was i think i was 17 whenever i went youth challenge academy you challenge uh i was i was always blessed i was always a, a little like a, a good looking little kid so i was blessed that i never got in trouble man i looked like a little innocent little kid i was honestly the shortest kid in my school so it's like i got away with so much just from being me like so many things that i should have gone and should have gone in trouble but i somehow just talked my way out of them i was always i got a good mouth on me since a little kid you know <laughs> there's a little kid i always had i always get out of it yeah but around 17 years old uh no i'm lying to you i'm lying to you uh i think i was around 16 whenever i got in trouble man and uh you know i went to go sell my my homie some weed and uh man we were smoking cans and everything out of that you know back in the day we used to yeah, I know. <laughs> I, smoke I, the little cans yeah. and all that and uh we were smoking cans and uh my phone died so every time he was gone he, wait there's phones what year was this uh shit i was 16 how so old was, if you don't mind me asking how old you are so, you i'm 37 okay yeah i'm 37 so i was 16 so how old was that man I know, uh be 42 so. yeah i would I, honestly i'd borrow my mom's phone and stuff i didn't have we'd play snake on the little remember we had a snake on the phone and stuff yeah but uh yeah i went in through the window to call my buddy because his phone died and um i went and grabbed some hot pockets went outside like yo bro i'm, I'm in your house pull up i got this weed for you i'm about to be right there and somebody uh, one of the neighbors called the police one of the uh. neighbors called the police so i was uh i was i was sitting there we we're still sitting getting high and out of nowhere just Grr! police pull up on me crazy and i think i was 
I was like maybe like 15, 16. I forgot about that. That's when I first got into trouble. And then uh, like, or at least actually got uh, in, like contact. charged with yeah, anything. You with know what cops. I'm saying? Yeah. Because um, we were always running from the police. And that's just the first time I finally got in trouble. You know, I was good. I was fast. <laughs> and yeah, man, uh, these damn crooked ass police, man, they kick down the window. They kick down the door. Um uh, Next thing you know, they walk out with this big old bud plant. I had no idea what the hell that, that my buddy even grew weed. And uh, they charged me for tr uh, criminal, uh, criminal damage to property, trespassing. Yeah, that's how I got into the system. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And it charged you, but not your buddy. Was your buddy white? Yeah, he was white. Well, I was telling him, let's run, let's run. And then I see the little look in his face. I was like, this fool's going to snitch on me if I run and shit. So that's the only reason I would have I ran. I would have got away. Oh, shit. But when I told him, like, let's go, bro, let's go, let's go. And I seen the look in his face, like, no, dude, I'm scared. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> if I take off, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get Even in more trouble, trouble anyway. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's how I got into the system. And after that, I was just like, the reason why I started hating the police is because, uh, because of that, man, it's messed up. I, I, I didn't do none of that. They I didn't, didn't even give you an opportunity. They didn't nah, even give you a chance. No, nah, it wasn't even yours. Yeah, no, I didn't get caught with the weed. I got caught with the weed. Well, I actually had the weed in my pocket and they sat me down on the carpet and, uh, and the carpet and where the stairs was, it was like it was like a little slit and some. Like I said, I don't know how God always blessed me, blessed me with a lot of situations. Like so many times that I got in uh, uh, out of trouble, like I could have got more in trouble, mm -hmm. but I, I like somehow slid it into the slit of the carpet and they just. But I still shouldn't have even got in trouble. They charged me for breaking and entering, for breaking down the door that they broke down, and that's how I got into the system. Oh, that is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after that, I was kind of just like Fuck the police, Fuck the police, because yeah. I knew you rebelled even but, more. I was, uh, I was, I was, you know, I was young. I didn't know nothing about the system. I didn't know nothing about, you know, fighting, nothing. You know, that's a, that's a shitty thing about, you know, a lot of people. We don't know how to fight, man. A lot of people that, you know how it is, uh, a lot of people that are in there, uh, they just didn't fight it. They just, oh through the time and then just yeah you know and, and at a young a young age I started learning that by the time I was 18 like if you look at my if you look at a lot of my record man everything is dismissed 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 just because shit God just blessed me man you know so you went to boot camp yeah I went to boot camp and how was that for you it was um it was dope once again you know you know how it is you get in the system and it's really it's meant to rehabilitate you but you end up coming out more plugged out, more plugged in, more, uh, man, all I did in there, I had a notebook in there. Man, I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you what it, what it really was. I had a notebook in there. And then my buddies used to sell shrooms and used to sell weed. And I had a whole notebook of, like, all the prices that I would get the shrooms for. I would draw out, like, what are my, like, my dream houses are going to look like. I had this, in my head, I had this pool that like what was it hey at it was, least you had a vision yeah, though you know? I, like, I was gonna buy this badass pool that like it hopped out and it had like a submarine and then when <laughs> i when i went in there i had like a whole grow room like i'm telling you i had the whole plot yeah, yeah i yeah. had the whole plot what i was about to do with the rest of my at life least you had a and how vision. much money i was gonna make i mean at least that was my you know my, my vision that that was my grand plan yeah because you know there's young kids that are there and that they don't even have a vision man like, yeah of what they want to do like yeah. they're just like i'm probably gonna end up coming back you know or whatever. All I knew was that I was gonna make some money. I didn't know how, what, when, where, but I just knew that you that's, money, that's you what was money mentality. given to me. So that's what I was, you know, that's what I was gonna. That's Did you get in a fight utilize. while you were? Did you ever fight while you were in the boot camp? Be honest, you know. Oh God. Or, no, no, yeah, we had a we had a fight camp in there. We had a fight camp in there, and they had all these uh, ma mattresses in there, man, and uh, they would just be like. You, you, go, and then. You know, oh, so the guards will tell you guys. No, no, nah, it was all the, the inmates. It was all the inmates, all the, all the, or all the, all the. Uh, I guess they weren't inmates because like the it was a boot camp, but just not nah, because you did have leaders, but just, just all the rowdy kids, and they just randomly just be like you, you after the fight, the fight, uh, fight club, and then. You just go in there and beat the shit out of each other. And oh, just, wow. Like, yeah. fight, like the movie Fight Club. Bites. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, that's when we just kind of got away. But it was, man, it, it honestly, it, uh, it made me who I am, man. The whole militant and, uh, you know, like 
pain is only uh, mental, you know what I'm saying? Uh, man, they would smoke the hell out of us the first day that we got. What does that mean, smoke the hell out of you guys? Smoke us like, you know, when we, like, they would make you fold the socks. And if, if, if we weren't, like, so they would make us, like, stand in place, right? Uh -huh. And if and if everybody You was, mean the guards will tell you the to guards, do it? The guards, or they were actually, at the time, they were straight out of, like, Iraq and everything. Straight, well, that's whenever, like, where was it, Afghanistan, whatever the hell yeah. it, it was going on out there. Man, we had some, like, some, the, them dudes literally... Right from the war to teach us to take care of us, yeah. Oh, wow. And they were like, it was pretty crazy, and they would smoke the hell out of us. Like smoke is like, uh, drop us on that get like you know like football running and drop on the ground, the dust and everything would be all muddy, all all. We, we ran super I think, training, yeah, super super training. I think we ran um for what was it. 12 miles one time it took us three hours to run it three hours and then our brakes were running in place and still like that yeah oh shit you're in super shape yeah yeah oh yeah yeah i've always been in super shape and i feel like that that uh, that really in reality it saved me from a lot but at the same time it also formed my mind because you know like not that i, I mean i ain't gonna lie to you I've, I've had a, i was like i said i was a good kid my mom and my dad, the way they raised me, they saved me from, even though I already got involved in a lot of crazy stuff, like, they saved me from, you know, a lot of, like, my morals, you know, they, they, they it was like, like, the moral base was still there to do good, but I, in, in my heart, like, whatever reason, I wanted to, no, I you, understand. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I yeah. do completely understand. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah. So you're 18, you get out of boot camp, or how old were you when you got out of boot camp? 18, I think, 18, yeah. What did you do? 17, what do you mean? What did you do when you got out? Got to the money. So you, so you, you brought your little notepad, <laughs> you took it with you, you know, and you, what did you start doing? Talk to me. Man. I mean, obviously tell us whatever you could tell Man, us. I'm going to tell y'all everything, bro. That's why I came out here, man. I want everybody to know where I come from, what it is, man. So I came in here to let y'all know. Like I said, a lot of this is my past. I'm a lot older now, you know, so I, I could, I could say, I could talk about a lot of this stuff, you know, but, uh. Man, I went out and got it, man. You know, uh, Albuquerque, that's where, like, um, a lot of my, you know, I got players. Shout out George Fisher, man. Shout out everybody, Fat Fish Records, man, everybody out there. Uh, shout out Jiggy, man. You know, they put me on as a little kid a lot, you know, and all the other, you know, all the other white kids, man, uh, that were out there, man. And just, you know, at the time, uh, the pounds were, like, 3,800 a pound. And I'm not if you're familiar with the weed game and stuff, but uh, yeah, 3,800 a pound, man, and, uh, I just got to it. Like I said, it was just, it was kind of just like, I never had to get in the game. Like, the game was already in me, if that makes sense to you. Like, you know, my familia, be honest with you, like, uh, that's something that I really I don't want to talk about. But, like, my gente is gente, you know, and it's like, I was never part of that. But your it was, like, you still it. in me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, be honest with you, I don't even know what the kind of stuff my, you know, the past or any of my family. And, but whatever reason, it's... I think I kind of do know. <laughs> Cause well, does it, has your mom ever told you anything like, ah, it's igual como, da, 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 da? Nah, no? nah, <laughs> not really. Not really. They just always kept it super humble, man. And I just, you know, you know, they... Everything our mama tells us and our daddy tells us from the beginning, you know, I'm, I'm barely the age that I'm in. I'm barely like, mom, I appreciate y'all. I wish I would have listened to you. I would have been, you know, I wish I would have listened to y'all from the beginning, man. Like, damn, I would have saved so much time, you know, from in jail and boot camps. and. Okay, and so you got out, you got to the money, you started selling weed. Is that what you... Oh, be real with you. Uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, so whenever I was young, yeah, I was selling weed and... Um, uh, I met this dude one time, man, you know, out in Alamogordo, I'm not going to mention no names with that, but, uh, of course. Um, you know, uh, I seen him one day, man, and he had the gold teeth, and he had the, uh, you know, the chains, you know, the regular dope boy, the dope boy web expeditions on 24s and all that, you know, like I said, on, man, yeah, he actually did, he had <laughs> spinners and everything, he had like a cut list, he had a, a, a bins, man, all of them sitting nice, man, and, uh, I seen him one day and I've heard about him and I said like, hey man, I'm hey I got some weed, bro. Got buy some weed for me. And I had a little squeaky voice still probably, bro. I was still a little kid, man. And uh, he's like, I hit you up, I hit you up. You know, he was a black dude. I hit you up, young nigga. I hit you up, young nigga. He never hit me up. And then I seen him again 
And then finally he's like, you know what, I'm gonna hit you up, man. And uh, but yeah, uh, one day he uh he called me and uh man, I would smoke, I would smoke at the time, man. And he was what, uh, he's an OG blood. They're the bloods, you know. And uh, I'd go there and smoke with all these OGs, like big, like real big gangsters, right? Like real hard gangsters. Like I'm talking about like bosses, bro. Like you know from Atlanta, like just you know caked up. And I out smoked everybody. Everybody was all high as shit. And I was like, man, y'all want to smoke? And everybody's like, you can still smoke. And I rolled the fat. Ass blunt right in front of him just to be like, all right. And I was just sitting there and they're just looking at me like, damn, this little guy crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just yes. They did. They did at the time. They didn't have the Cali weed back there. You know, it was. It was. I kind of was the one. You know, be real with you. I could brag about that. I was. I was the one that really brought it to the area where I'm from. You know, the gas, the Cali gas out here. You know, since then I've been locked in out here with the with the Cali gas out here. But yeah, that. And then one day, like, you know. He introduced me to that other shit, the white man. I was, you know, I was the brick man, you know. I was, a, I was a white man back in the day, so it's just like that's really when it was over. Like I said, I, I'm okay to talk with this because it's my past. I already did my Fed time for all this shit, you know. It's you know, so I'll be able. So to you really did get indicted. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I got it. You know, I got in. I got it. I got indicted, man. And um, you know, after that, you know, like I said, I grew. Uh, it was it was a town with a lot of white kids, man. So it's just like they all had money, like oil money, man. So it's like <laughs> my little buddy front my, my my big dog in front of me a, a little bit of it, and uh, I went back. I called him thirty minutes later, bro. Like, hey, bro, they love it, like real shit. Like, you know, I, I think I was like sixteen at the time, seventeen at the time, or something like that. Be honest, y'all don't remember, bro. It was over after that. It was over after that. I just then you really, and then that's what. You you kept moving. Yeah, yeah. It was, like I said, I was the weed man, and just once once I got in, involved into that man, it was just it was just it was over after that. I you know. So I, at what age did you get indicted? Well, see, I didn't get. Let's see, let's see what up. I never really got in trouble. Like I said, I I was. Uh, they taught me the game from the beginning, you know. Shut up, don't talk. Uh, you know, under uh, you know under the don't nothing on video, nothing on audio. No, the you know the regular shit, you know. And every everything the OGs taught me from the from the beginning, I just did everything they told me. I literally like, and you know, I, I was blessed till uh till what? Um, oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. So one day, I was cruising right. And I was I was I was on probation. Oh yeah, I had picked up some dope charges in El Paso, in El Paso, Texas, and stuff. And uh, I was on probation, and they moved me to New Mexico with that. Um, oh damn, see, I, I'm barely remembering. Like I said, this is all old, so this is all stuff I'm you know I'm barely remembering again. So let me, let me take it back a little bit. <laughs> I took off to El Paso one day, right? El Paso, Texas. Man, I don't even remember what age I was, but. I, I would always run away from like 15, 16 years old. Like I said, I was a little badass kid. I was I would always run away. 14 years old, I was running away. And then one day, I literally just like, you know what? I'm going to head that way. Literally, never been to El Paso, never been over there. Pulled up to El Paso. I said, first exit that I get off on, right? First exit that I get off on, it was a, uh, oh my God, ah, Dyer. I, I hope they Dyer. First hotel that I get, that's where I'm going to stay at. In, in uh, the Devil's Triangle, somehow I ended up in the worst neighborhood in El Paso. Just, and I'm telling you, that's how, that's what I did. Literally said, drive that way, El Paso. First exit that I see that I like, I'm going to get off that. First hotel that I see, I ended up, uh, for, for y'all from El Paso, so I know y'all know the Devil's Triangle, man, and whoo. it already sounds bad. Yeah, it was crazy. That's you know all the prostitutes. That's where all the whole game, the Bloods, the Crips. I met the you know the uh, the Crip Queen. I met everything in there. You know, like I was just always embraced. You know, since a young and you know really what got me in the game is and that nobody ever was like, hey, what the heck are you doing here? Like, who are you? Nah, man. For some reason, like just the person that I am, that I'm raised, and then plus like. I was just always embraced. You carried yourself everywhere well. the way you know. I carried like, everywhere that I went. It didn't matter who the Bloods, the Crips, the Latin Kings, or, the fucking MA. Like everywhere, they just, they just respected me, and they were just always just, "Well, can you sell this? Fuck yeah, I can, bro. Let's get it." You know what I'm saying? Just uh, and I'm oh yeah, and I'm gonna tell you this shit. This is kind of funny. <laughs> at the time, I'm not gonna lie. I was on some shit. I was on the shit at the time, and uh, I was already up for like eight days, man. Tripping, bro. Like just tweaking the out man and uh at this hotel i had freaking stacks of dvds and freaking speakers you know how it is from what everybody's just you know I do. <laughs> you know i had I, do. I, I had a system in my hotel room and everything <laughs> bumping in there you know i was, I do. I was in there just living doing bad living out, at the time i was doing good you know in my head well, and your in, head in my head I but was in doing, reality you were yeah, doing bad horrible yeah horrible. no yeah yeah you were doing bad i get what you're saying it's just like so, a little 
after being up for seven, eight days, I decided it'd be an amazing idea to pop some shrooms. Oh, dang. Imagine the feeling of that. I've already been up straight seven, eight days, no sleep. And I'm like, fuck, let's pop some shrooms. So I pop some goddamn shrooms. Oh, my God. Like, I couldn't even, like, think. Like, my mind kind of got stuck. I kept walking in, inside of my car, and I was supposed to uh, back to my car because I, I was going to go get an apartment right behind the back. Like, I already made some money, and I was going to be good or whatever. I was going to have a little apartment, and my little trapping scheme was about to go hard. And I decided to pop some shrooms, but I, I couldn't make my decision whether I should drive or walk. And I don't know why, but I kept walking into my, my apartment and changing, and then I would go back to my truck. And then I, was, uh, I think sometimes it was God. It was God saving me with a lot of this stuff. Oh, man. yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. And um, and then, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to walk. So I started walking right there in the Devil's Triangle. And I don't know where I got hit by the police. Like, you know, they pulled up on me. And uh, <laughs> and they were like, you look like someone we're looking for. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they were like, do you have an ID? Like I said, at that moment, the shrooms just hit me. So I was like, I didn't even know if like this was really happening at the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if it would have been me, I'm, I'm really smart. But at the time, like... I don't know. It just seemed like a cartoon. So he's like, do you have your ID? And I was like, yeah, I'm staying right around the corner. Come on. For whatever fucking reason, I told him. But like, so we walked up to the room. You let him it, in? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I didn't. So I, 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 I walked into the room and I told him no. But they pushed me aside and they went in and just started flipping my fucking mattresses and shit. They started flipping my mattresses, all my, all my food and everything. But at the time... Them shrooms hit me so hard, and, and what did he tell me? He's, I was like, you guys can't come in here. And he's like, shut up. And like I said, them shrooms hit me so hard that I was like, and I just got in, I just, I just stayed shut up. And then I remember they sat me sat, sat down on the side, and then I remember they brought the, do, the drug dog in there, and I was just trying to just rub my face on the goddamn, because he looked all soft and shit, man. And just, I just was not there. I was not all there. But anyways, they ended up finding, what was it, like, couple grams of meth and some like an ounce of shrooms or some Looking shit too man crazy. Huh? yeah it was, it, was, it, was, it was nothing big but in texas it is in texas you get caught with anything with a cart right now and you're hit you know what i'm saying and uh i remember i just remember like i said i don't remember too much of it but i remember like driving on the way to the to the uh to the cop station to the police station and, and i was i remember telling the cop and i was like man this is a stupid question man but i was all is this really happening right now he's like yeah man you're going to jail bud and i remember i was like that sucks, man. And uh, the next day, I just wake up in jail. Like, I don't even remember. Like, I just barely remember that. But the next day, I remember waking up in jail like, what the f***? Why am I in here? Why am I in jail? I don't remember why I was in there. Nothing. Just, I was all pale and all skinny and so shit. So, why did they keep, they, what was your charges, if you remember? It was meth charges and, and a weed charge and, uh, uh, and like, the shrooms. Like, okay. It was like a couple grams, a couple grams of meth and f***. Uh, um, so just like substance sh shit. Yeah, substance shit, man, yeah. Then so then you just, they put you, you went to court, you went to jail, like you went to the county. How did that work? Yeah. I How long the, did you stay in? Man, to be honest, I don't remember that time. I don't remember a lot of that shit. Um, I was in a bad car accident and my, my memory's a little messed up since then. But um, but yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I ended up getting on probation i remember i remember how much i did a couple months i did a couple months i know i did that uh it's this loke out there in, in in uh in el paso the glass house all the aztecas in there they all the familia in there they have it really locked down like tell me more about that yeah like like it, man like whatever you could say when you go when you like pee and stuff man I, I don't know how it is out here but it's like you have to scream yoga you can't even leave a droplet you can't even leave nothing like somebody has to come like when you piss they have to come and like check it and if there's even a droplet or anything on the toilet like you get uh, they'll give you one they'll give you one strike hey g next time this is the next time we tell you but for like i said for whatever reason i was always embraced by all the you know they i, I was never like i leave that shit and they'll just be like and like I was like I probably the only person they never violated. Like I said, I was always just embraced because. Well, good for you. Yeah, yeah. They just always love me. But yeah, like like in the shower, you had to get the shower. You had to freaking get every droplet, and you had to ajax the 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 the, the metal uh you know the aluminum shit that I had to, and then you had to dry it clean with the towel, and then all the droplets. That's not how they do they do it like that out here. Well, maybe the guys. I mean, the girls are. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a know, little day. I guess a, you guys don't have a. I mean, you know, we have to clean our stuff. For yeah, sure. yeah. So you had to like get all. All the droplets all in there and everything but like like i said uh wow it's, it's pretty crazy out there yeah it was pretty it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty cool though it was, it was fun it was uh I, you know at the time it was fun it's not fun now like but no well, yeah i understand but yeah well, that's intense yeah it was, super it was clean. pretty crazy yeah it was, it was super clean in there and then um 
Yeah, man. Shit. What was like the craziest thing you saw? Man, there. Over there is pretty crazy, but it's like I said, it's 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 really controlled. It's like the the Aztecas over there have a. Is that what the gang is called there? The, the Aztecas? Aztecas. Yeah, Aztecas. They're the uh, they're they're a familia. They're more like a you know like a familia and stuff. Not a gang, but like a familia. You know, whatever. But uh, but yeah, they they uh. And the Aztecas are they Mexican or what are Mexicanos, they? Mexicanos, yeah. Okay. Mexicanos, Aztecas, yeah. And uh, but in there at that time, at that time, man, like. Man, it's just it's just pretty crazy. Just the bajo is just like I said, just anything, just just for peeing on that stuff. They grab you from the back of the head and they give you bajos. Bah, bah. I don't remember how many to the stomach, you know, and then just you know, for any, pe- for leaving drops. Yeah, just anything. Like if they you got tied up. If anything, yeah, even even just like in your room, if you leave shit on the you know on the uh, on the tables out there, you know everything is just boom. You get violated. They'll tell you one time. So everybody has to be, you know, it just keeps it really like super, super, super. Which tight. is great. Yeah, yeah. Which is great. Which is great. You know. So it's like, you know, like like so like so like there was there really wasn't a lot of crazy stuff in there because even but that's like, pretty intense though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even like even like the snitches and everything, they're already beat. They're already they already beat the hell out of them before they you know they already yeah. Be, are they able to? be in the same dorms and units as you guys because out here it, it's not like that they have their own areas they can't yeah, be over there too oh okay over okay, there okay. Too, over there too but it's just like i said over there it's already like they're just tight man by the time you already land you already know they already know what who what when where why you know everybody's people are already pressing you already so everybody already goes their way so unless you had like you know you know just problems already in the streets then you know uh-huh. You know, or some situation that happened, then you know they were, you know, they, they talk to all the speakers, whatever, and then they just violate you, or, or you know, they're trying to give you a break. Hey, give you get the f- out, or else this is gonna happen. To you sometimes they would even give them breaks, you know. Ah, but, um, interesting. But yeah. So, tell me about um, you getting indicted. Like, how old were you? We, and were you talking you? about like the my Fed cases? I was yeah. talking about you. Um, because you're on indicted TV. Yeah. Um. So. Uh well you know like like as indicted also too like I also went to um uh, another situation happened you know before this in um in El Paso again I had went back to El Paso and you know when I got out the halfway house so god damn everything's coming back right now man yeah I keep telling us so before all this all right so I'm from like I was from New Mexico right and when all this stuff happened I caught those dope charges right and then I went to New Mexico. But I was still getting it. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't give a fuck. It was, it, if anything, it just taught me how to be smarter, you know? And uh, one time I got I got in trouble, and I was on probation. So I was on my way to check up on probation. So right before probation, I would go hide all the work, you know, all the scales and everything, and everything, just you know, all the work and everything, and I would go check in. On my way over there, uh, my buddy Billy, he was paralyzed from here down, and he had this badass card, candy paint car. Like, he, he was a badass car. And I went, and I hey, how you doing, Gene? And it was all dirty. He had mud all in it, man, and a badass car. So I was like, "Hey, I gotta go check in, G. Are you, this is this, you're my brother, bro. Like, you're not gonna have your car like this. Let's go clean it, and then I'll go check in right quick." So the night before, I was a little player at the time. I had like eight, nine girlfriends and stuff, man. And uh, <laughs> I was, somehow they all like got together and found out that I was. So I was on the phone all night. So I didn't even sleep with all my little girlfriends. And I was sitting there like, "Nah, babe, I love you." Nah. That she's lying, girl. I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I stayed up all night. All Every night. night all all, no, no, that night. Just oh, that, that night. night. Okay. That, that, that night right before that is for whatever reason that happened. So I, I go and see my homie. I turn left on the stoplight. And I, like I said, I hadn't even slept at all. I think I slept. I don't even sleep. I don't even think. And I went down to go look at a CD. And I guess he had stopped to drop the homie off at the, at the village hardware. And I looked up and he had stopped. And I had freaking, oh, I had yanked, I had yanked the car, and when I hit the brakes in my truck, like, it didn't even, it like, went, grrr, it didn't even grab on the brakes, so I hit this Honda Civic, and there was this old lady that was in there, and I just see her little head bouncing around, and like I said, man, I, I was crazy, I've been on freaking mm-hmm. speed chases, I, I ran every time, no exceptions, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, you know, just, you know, I don't give a hell, I was about to take off, and my front bumper was scraped onto my tire and I was about to take off in my truck but it was like it wouldn't even let me go so I was like I can't dip so I backed up I parked right there where the village hardware was and uh 
I told the homie that, uh, hey, bro, open your trunk. That's all I told him. So, like, bro, I'm not even going to lie. Like, like I said, I'm going to tell you how it was. I was, I was kind of sloppy at the time when it came to that. I, 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 maybe not sloppy, but I was moving fast at the time, like, the day before that. Man, I had grams in between. I had blunts, ropes. I had everything. Man, I had zips of freaking yak in my freaking, in my glove compartment, everything, man. And somehow, thank to God, I freaking, grrr, I grabbed everything and there was nothing in there. I took it to the homie and he dipped, man. Man. And after that, I remember the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the cop came or whatever, you know. And I always did. The, hey, I'm gonna give y'all. I'm gonna give y'all a tip. Every time I would get in trouble, and this is sometimes this is how I would get away with it. I would throw my keys out and I would throw them on the floor and I would lock it and I would get out. When I would, and I, went, and I knew I had shit in there. I knew I had shit in there. I would lock it and then they would come and then I would act like get in the door. We need all right. And then I'd be like, oh, man, my door's locked, you know, and as long as nobody, and every time, and then after that, I would tow my car to wherever I needed to get it. I did that like 10 times, save oh, me. Yeah, so uh, that's free game right there to everybody. I did that shit like 10 times, and it worked. But every we don't want to condone any kind of bad no, things. No, no, yeah, we don't want to condone it, but if you're out here getting how you live, man, <laughs> be smart, Lock man. Lock yourself out of your we don't, Yeah, I promise you, I, I can tell you like 10 stories that I did that, and oh, my God, it saved me every time. Car full of things, and I did the same things. And then they would, just, and then I would tow it, and then tow it wherever I would need to get. Oh shit! And, uh, down for that one. That's yeah, the yeah. One so uh, I did that the same thing, but I forgot my ID, and it smelled like weed in there, and I forgot my ID and my insurance in the car. So that's the only thing I messed up that time. So when I opened my car, oh, he opened it right away. He smelled my weed. He smelled the weed, and he, he handcuffed me. And he was, he was, he was, you know, he was, he was doing what he was doing, whatever. He was getting the. Uh, <clears throat> Writing everything, he asked me, uh, uh, what's your name? And I told him my name, and he, and he stops, and he looks at me, he says, what's your name? And I was like, so-and-so. So he's like, I'll be right back. Hey, they already God, knew it was you. They already knew me. Like I said, God works mysteriously, man. So I don't know if something was about to happen, what. They ran up on me, man. Hey, so you're the big dog. You're the big dog. And I remember I was pissed about my car. Like I said, bro, I was, I've been a while once. And I was telling my man, fuck you, bro. You're talking about, you're sitting here telling about, uh, you're the big dog. and not my. Like my fuck you, bro. I was telling the freak. He was the he was the uh, the drug the drug enforcer the drug guy whatever the hell they call it, the drug. Uh. But anyways, he kept telling me, "We got you. We're gonna do this. We're gonna." Little did they know, nothing was in the car no more. They went in the whole car and they freaking searched. I didn't find nothing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, "We know everything. We know." They did. They were. He was telling me what, when, where, what days, what town, oh, but everything. On you. But my OGs taught me what? What I tell you? You know, no video, no sky mm -hmm. no diga nada. When they plead the fifth. You know, and uh, and that's whenever I knew that I was good at this. Any other person would change. So this it. happened when you hit the old lady. Yeah, this happened okay. when I when I hit the old lady, and so I went to the uh, I went to uh, to jail, and I was sitting in there, and they were like, "You're gonna do nine years. You're gonna do this. You do that." Like I said, they were they were till they, they interrogated me, everything, man, and uh, we know this, we know that, we know who, we know what, we know when, where. But obviously, if you did. And then I remember, I remember I was, I was like, what, I was like 18 at the time, I think. And I remember I was like, I even, I'm not gonna lie to you, I even teared. I was like, what I tell him, I was like, I want to tell him, I was like, you know what? Even if I was doing this and that, like, I wouldn't mess up somebody else's life to make mine better. And he's like, I was like, give me the fuck out of here. And he's like, are you sure, young man? And I was like, yeah. And he let me out. And I went back to my cell block, and I was bummed out. I was bummed out because I was about to do that time, you know? And I was like, damn, I'm barely 18. Just got out of boot camp, whatever. Like, damn, I'm back in this shit. And then the OG, I remember the OG told me, he said, mijo, are you sure you're telling me what you did is right? He's like, you didn't tell him nothing, right? And I was like, nah, man, I ain't no snitch. I ain't no snitch, man, but I'm just, I'm about to do all this time. And he's like, as long as you're telling me everything that's correct, watch what's going to happen, mijo. You're about to get released in a couple of days. And I was just like, man, whatever, bro. I was asleep for three days, and you got yeah. released three, three, four days later. Ray is roll it up, and I was. I didn't. He said it a couple times. He's like, "Do you want to fucking leave or not?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You're getting released," and I was like, "How?" And so I was like, "Boom." Yeah, because you don't have anything in the car. So what are they keeping you for? At that exactly at that moment, I realized, man, you just shut your mouth. You just play this game right, man. You gonna be, you gonna be okay. <laughs> you gonna be okay. You know? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm, t I'm telling you how it is. No, I know. Instead of I'm changing just my, like, oh my god, your face expression was like you like relived it right now, like super bad. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. And then, like I said, I'm a, I'm a whole different person now, man. Like I went vegan, but this is what this is who oh, I used to say be. You went vegan. This is I did, man. I went vegan. This is who I used to be, you know. And it's, and it's like I said, it's crazy reliving this stuff because it's like sometimes you forget, man. We forget who, where we come from, you know. And I know I did. I know I did with doing what I did in my life, man. But uh, but uh, yeah, after that, it was kind of like I got put on. They gave me a, a GPS monitor and everything. I the house was arrest still shit. grinding. I was still grinding. I had to put my I had to put my monitor on a little thingy, on a little thing, and I had to kept, they had to like they would track like I think they could even like see where I was and all that. I don't know if they had that right here, but it's like we'll have like I, a house arrest to put. It was, it was a house arrest, and I had to carry this big old thing on me. But at seven o'clock, I hung. I, I I would put it on this thing. And, and we lived on the top of the hill right by the movie theaters. It was like maybe like 75 feet. And they gave me 200 feet to move around. So every time I put my thing in, right after that, I would still go grind at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? And I Got was it. still 200 feet away. So, I, so this is how my mind worked. Yeah. You feel me? It was just like other people would change their life, but I was still kind of like... Damn, like it just made me smarter. If anything, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If anything, it just made me understand, you know, uh, you know, the game a little bit more, man. And uh, shit, it was it was history after that. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> so that happened. Um, I kept failing UAs. Like I said, I was wild. I didn't care. I was always I was always in and out of county. I was for like failing UAs, like dumb stuff. Like I said, I would always like. Oh man, just so much stuff that I, you know, that I that I got away from, and uh, I just kept smoking. I didn't want to stop smoking. I didn't want, so they kept. So one day, anyways, so one day uh, I was supposed to go back to jail, and I called my girlfriend. I was like, "Hey, well, I'm gonna do some time again." So and so, she's like, "I love you. Uh, please don't go. Please don't go." And I was all there up and they all, "Well, oh, I love you, babe. I'm gonna go over there with you. I'm just gonna cut off my bracelet. I cut off my bracelet for this chick, <laughs> and she was already trying to break up with me too, baby mama." Ah, oh, two weeks later, she was already <laughs> she was already trying to break up with me. Two weeks later, but after that, I I cut my bracelet off. Check this out. This for blaming it on your baby mama. Yeah, no. Try to use her as an excuse. <laughs> this fool. So, so check this out. I had that little monitor. This is how low I was. I freaking the 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 door to the um to the probation offices. Like there's a probation office, and they had a, they had to like buzz it with a little buzzer. And somehow it was open. I walked all in the way in there with my brace cut off, set it on because I didn't want them to charge my mom three bands. It was like three, four, five bands that they were going to yeah, charge yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I walked in already on the run with my brace cut off. I went to the probation office and I walked all the way in there and I set it on their desk and I took off. I went off on the run, You're man. Like, damn, this was too down. Yeah, I, I took off on the run, man. And I, I was on the run for like three, four years. Oh, and, wow. Uh, you were on the run for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was on the run for like three, four years out there in Roswell. Shout out to everybody out there in Roswell. Alien, alien, um, Rosberg out there, man. And uh, that's kind of really where, like I said, uh, uh, where I was from, it was really a lot of white people and stuff, man. And out there in Roswell, man, like, oh, it's gutter out there. It's, it's uh, shh. It's crazy out there in Roswell, man. It's crazy. crazy in what form? Oh, man. Just imagine all the low-ass little dudes from out here all in one town. That's the way I see it, at least. You know, it's, LA just, is huge. it's just imagine all these little low, these little shooters, all these every, all of them, and you get all the hardest ones, and you put them all in one little town. Wow. Yeah, like, well, it's like a lot of, like, carteles, a lot of, like, big dogs out there, a lot of uh, everything's all connected. Wow. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. My, my homie used to freaking trade fucking yellow to the probation officer for community service hours. Believe me or not. I mean, no. I, I mean, you're I'm telling I'm a mama. Me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was just crazy. Like, as long as you had money, like, it's just, you were locked in, man. And uh, But, yeah, I was on the run out there for four years, man. Uh, still grinding. <laughs> still grinding. Still, But, you know what? You know what? I, I, I wanted to mention this, actually. You know what? You know what the meaning? You know why I started grinding? I just wanted to make music. I just wanted a studio. And okay. some clothes. So you made music. You because yeah. earlier you mentioned that yeah. you were in school yeah. and you were writing yeah. your lyrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's just uh, <laughs> okay. I'm glad I remember this too. Uh, when Coolio came out, when what year was that? Gangsters Paradise. I don't remember, but I, uh, I don't know. Uh, two thousand man. Whenever. What year was two th uh, Coolio Gangsters Paradise? A long time ago. A long time ago. So whenever that came out, yeah. I was a little meskin looking at the screen and I remember just seeing Coolio come out, man. And, you know, I'm Mexicano. Like I said, we, we weren't raised around a lot of black people there in, in Ridoso, in Dallas, yeah, but there uh, where I was from. Uh, and um, I remember in my head, however old I was, my, my, what I was thinking was, 
damn, man, these fools are ghetto, and they're making money, and they're spitting about the, but then they're, the whole world loves them, and it's like, I want to do this, like, the art, the art of it, just, it was, and that's the only reason why I ever stopped, you know, started hustling, and I didn't care about anything, I didn't care about the trouble, I just wanted a studio, man, I just wanted a studio. Got and, it, got it. And, uh. And uh, and make music and, and 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 be able to do this. Well, in the process, like when you're going through all of this, were you making music? Did you ever get in the studio? Oh, or? I'm not even gonna lie to you. Whenever that happened, I'd always tell all the little, all the little girls that I was uh, I was a rapper. Oh, I put on my beanie and I put on my hat sideways, and I would tell all the girls, "Yeah, I'm a rapper." And all the girls were, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> they were all my little fans already. I never, I never wrote nothing in my life. I never wrote nothing. I never even, I don't even think I knew how to rap. But I, even before I wanted to do this, I'd always tell everybody that I was a rapper. You know, I'd always tell everybody that I was a rapper, man. But uh, that's funny. Yeah, it, it is. It was funny, but um, but yeah. So um, you're on the run for four years. I was on the run for four years, man, and um. You know all that, all that all that shit. I don't know if you wanted me to tell you all the crazy stories they have, man. We got raided in it. We got we're running from police, man. High speed chases, man. Uh, I was just, you know, I was taught just run. <laughs> you know what Always I'm saying? Run. Like, yeah. You know, even growing up, the la I remember the last time I didn't run, I was even like, nah, bro, you need to stop that. You know what I'm saying? Automatically, you see a cop behind you. That's just that's the way I was just run, bro. Just get away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And. uh but yeah, I was on the run for four years, man. Uh, Did you get your studio in those four years? Um, so that this is where I met, like I said, shout out Fast Fish Records, man. Uh, he used to go on tour back in the days. Uh, with Little Flip, this was when Baby Bash was popping, man. Barely growing up, uh, barely pulling, barely popping. Um, I was grinding. And I bought this badass Yukon on some switches out there in Roswell, man. And uh, I remember I, I I had heard about him or somebody had told me about him. I don't remember how I met you, Fish. But uh, I pulled up to the hotel where Little Flip was and I rolled him a fat ass blunt of some dank, man. And um, Little Flip is sunshine. Yeah, okay. yeah. Little Flip sunshine, uh, you know, because I, uh, I was born out there in Texas. So, uh but yeah, uh, I went out there, man, and, and like I said, it was just I seen, I seen that I pulled up to the, I was like gutta gutta, little flip was rec uh, performing, man, and I pulled up to the hotel, I I handed flip a big old blunt, I told him yo, tell him it's me, tell him it's me, man, and uh, I met him, and that's when I kind of started getting the. Um, like, all right, I'm about to get in the studio. I'm finally, but someone's finally gonna get me in it. But no, nah, I don't think I've ever before that. I don't think I, I was, uh, I didn't, ha I didn't have it like that. I was a ghetto little kid, you know. Nobody wanted to like. I never had opportunities but like that. But you were that. making money, but though. I was making money, though, but it's just like, you know how it is. You start getting this money, and you just kind of start getting lost, man, and start getting kind of like, you know, just the game. Sheesh, man. You start getting lost in this game, and it's not that we lose track of We just kind of get you just want just the money, the money, money, money and then, yeah. the, you know, just everything that comes with it, the life, you know what For I'm sure. saying? Just the... The high of it, I guess, I guess, because is that what we're really chasing? Mm -hmm. Is the high, huh? The 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 high, man, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was, but yeah, around that time, um, I started going to Albuquerque, and uh, I was still grinding, but I was on the run. So it was like I moved to Albuquerque so I could start getting in the booth, and once I started getting those opportunities, um, damn, I got hit and I got picked up. And, uh, By the feds? Uh, no, no, this was still state. This is still okay. state. This is still state charges and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I ended up getting picked up. I um, I um, I had a bunch of like fake charges on like fake names. I was booked in on a different name in there because uh, I had to give him a fake name. So after when I went to court, I told the judge, I was like, man, this isn't even my name, ma'am. And they were like, all right, well, I told her my story. Like, ma'am, I was just on the run, but I'm just ready to do my time. Just please give my... And then she dismissed all those charges that I had. And then they uh, started my... What's it called? My my 14 days for them to pick me up. What's that called? Um, oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Um, I don't know what it's called, but... Well, they pick you up or whatever. Yeah, so that's whenever I went back to Texas. So that even worked out for you, to be honest with the judge. Yeah, like, so yeah. So you never went to state prison. Um, I went to state prison for my... Um, so that's what I was, what I was getting at. So like I said, I was, I always got blessed, man. I always got blessed. I always had just I always kept it real with whatever you know. And uh, at this time, I um, I went to the halfway house after being on the run. I did a year in there. As soon as I got on the halfway house, three months later, I flipped my Yukon on the freeway and almost killed my homie. And and then that's whenever I uh, finally got uh, I finally I finally um, I finally went to prison after that. I wasn't even supposed to go to prison, man. Uh, check out this story. 
So I go, I, 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 I get charged, right? Uh, intoxicated vehicle assault, bodily injury or death. Uh, my homie that I was in jail in the halfway house with there, uh, he'd always be like, yo, when I get out, let's go to the strip club, bro. We're going to go hard. And anyways, one day he did get out. And, um, and uh, one day he did get out and uh, he called me. He's like, bro, let's get lit. Anyways, we got lit. Yeah, we got lit, lit, lit. We went to the strip club, but it's like, man, I'm going to tell you the whole story, man. This is how, this is how God works with me. I remember that day. I couldn't find, I couldn't, I couldn't, we, we dipped, right? And we were about to go to the strip club and he's like, where's your ID? So I was like, damn, it's back at the spot. He's like, for real, man? So we had to go back, so, so he went back to the spot. So I was looking for my ID, right? I couldn't find it anywhere, anywhere. It wasn't anywhere. And on my mama, I don't know where. It, it, like I was walking, there was a table over there and there was something over there. I don't know where the ID just goes. Right in front of me I swear I'm my mama I don't know how that happened That's how God works with me And Instead of I, I remember at the time I was even like What are you oh, like Something like that Was kind of weird bro Like do you need Do you need to not go But though We never listened to yeah. that Damn voice again So I was like Man let's go I grabbed my ID So boom I had just cleaned my I had just cleaned my car Right I had just cleaned my car Nothing was in there we went to the spot. I had a jersey on. We were gonna get into the. We were gonna get into the strip club, and uh, boom, I had a jersey on. So you can't go in there with a jersey on. So I was like, damn, I don't have nothing. I don't know how. Honestly, this is how just things work. I had a shirt in the back, and I could have sworn I took everything back out of there. So it was like, so it was like, ma'am, I get in the strip club, whatever. Anyways, we end up getting faded, faded. He, my homie pukes on the pukes on a. Uh, he pukes on the stripper and oh, everything, shit. man. Yeah, he pukes on the stripper, and uh, we were driving off, man. And uh, and he had alcohol poisoning, man. And we were mobbing. Like I said, I had a badass Yukon on switches, and I was like hitting switches on the freeway in El Paso, on the way up there to uh, Tramway, and up there by uh, I forget Be what quiet. it is up there. And um, I'm about to, I'm about to. He, he finally he's puking, he's puking, and I had just waxed my Yukon, man. And there's puke all the way down the side of my car, man. And uh. I told him, he finally came in, and, he, and I was like, you good? He was like, take me home. Dude, this, his eyes were going like this. He was so drunk, his eyes were literally spinning, man. They were spinning, man. And uh, um, I was like, yo, so he's like, I need some bread. So I was like, man, I need, I need to get some food in this guy's stomach. So I hauled ass. I started speeding, right? So I'm getting it, and out of nowhere, he goes to puke, and I just remember him going, Whoa, and I was like, please don't puke in my car, bro. So he goes to like, like, he kind of gets like on his knee. Like I don't remember kind of how it was, but he goes to puke and he almost falls out my window while I'm driving like 80, 90 miles an hour down the freeway. And um, I, when I talk about this, I start getting a little shaky because I'm still healing from a lot of this stuff, man. But uh, I he almost falls out of my window and I go to grab him by the back of his belt and he grabs me and I fall in like this and I hold him and it makes me yank the steering wheel. And when I go back to where I'm heading, uh. I look up and I have like a, a couple seconds to, to either go left. And I remember thinking if I go right, the, 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 the exit was like that and I would have flew off of the thing. <gasps> but if I go left, I'm going to be on the freeway. So I yanked it to the left and I hit it. I turned. And when I turned, he was already hanging out my window. <gasps> he was already hanging out my window when I hit the goddamn median going like 80, 90 miles an hour. Oh, my goodness. So I hit the median going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> He instantly flies out, <gasps> and I'm freaking boom, freaking spinning. And I remember just, like I'm saying, like I'm saying, like I said, so this is how blessed I am, and this is how low I am at the same time. Is like, I remember, like I wasn't even scared. I wasn't even scared, but I remember just thinking, like, I remember just thinking, like, like damn, you're gonna die. And I was like, no, nah, you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. And I remember, like, damn, but you're the one. I was even arguing with myself. I was like, uh, this is the only thing I remember. I was like. Man, like, you're the one drinking and driving, fool. You shouldn't have been drinking and driving. And I was like, nah, but it's not your time to die. It's not your time to die. And I'm holding on to the steering wheel. Next thing you know, I uh, open my eyes and I'm standing on the freeway. I'm just standing. I'm just standing on the freeway and... Um, you're out of your car. I'm, I'm out of my car, like a couple hundred feet away, just standing. I'm flipping, boom, standing on the freeway. I'm standing and just standing on the freeway, man. And uh, I remember even just standing there and I remember I was just even like... Like, my, my Yukon is just 
burning, just torching, just torching, man. And I'm just like, and I'm just like, like, what the hell happened? I'm still trying to figure out what happened. Like, I'm, I'm like, so I'm like, I don't even know what's happening yet. Like, how I even got there. And I kind of don't even remember. I bashed my head. I lost my memory. I don't, I don't, I lost, I like, now I like, that's why it's kind of a little hard to bring up a lot of the stuff. Uh, I don't, like, now I, my, my memory is getting better, but I, I don't even remember being like in high school, a lot of stuff like that from the car accident. Like I don't even remember like things that happened to me as a little kid from bashing, but that's the only thing that was around me. I bashed my head, man, and uh, sometimes I feel like I got like men in black or something. But anyways, I don't want to get into that. But uh, <laughs> I'm just standing on the freeway, man, and my and my Yukon's just burning, just burning, man. And I and I remember just like I'm trying to figure out, and then and this white guy just runs out of nowhere. And he's like, and he's running in circles. He's like, ah, oh, who's in the car? And I remember just thinking, I was like, oh, my dog's in there, my dog. And I remember I was like, damn, I just got out to run. I was boot camp. I'm about to go back to jail. Like, damn. And I try to run towards the car, and the flames are so damn big that I couldn't even get close to him. I couldn't even get close to the vehicle. I couldn't even get close to the vehicle. And uh, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, take off. And I was like, man, he's dead in there. He's dead in there. And, and I guess whenever I was flipping, I even landed on top of this this Mexican lady, uh, her car. Like, I, I landed on top of her car and a bunch of crazy stuff, man. And uh, I remember just looking to the side, to the, to the side of the street. And uh, I, uh, I see a, a Explorer uh, parked on the side of the road. And I run over there. And it was this Mexican, this Mexican lady. And uh, I remember just telling her, like, man, my señora, no sé qué pasó. No sé qué está pasando, por, por favor, por favor, ora por, ora por mí, you know. I don't know what happened, but please pray for me, I told her in Spanish. And we start sitting there praying, man. We start sitting there just praying. We're just praying. And I'm, I'm still kind of trying to figure out, like, what the hell is going on? Like, I literally don't even kind of really remember what just happened. I just remember just flipping, boom, standing on the freeway. To this day, that's all I remember. I visioned it one time whenever I was telling it this time, but I don't remember what happened. And uh, out of nowhere... So my cousin, R.I.P. My my primo, he died a year before, right? They wouldn't let me out the halfway house. I had already I had already programmed and everything, and they wouldn't release me. I had already done my hours, of, of the, you know, the the work and all that. He died, uh, uh, no, uh, if I'm not mistaken, November fourth, the year before, and out of nowhere they released me November fourth. A year later, so they released me. So that's when that happened. So, so everything you always kind of like. Uh, just like I said, the way God works with me is just kind of a, uh, it's crazy. So, uh, with that said, I'm sitting there praying, and I, you could you could think whatever you could think whatever you, anybody wants to believe, but I feel like the only reason I'm alive is my my cousin uh, came inside of me that day. Uh, I believe. I remember I was sitting there just praying, and out of nowhere I just see his face. <laughs> I swear, like, imagine just, like somebody's just running at your face. I believe. And I remember I just went, <gasps> and so the reason he died, he had uh, he'd been through the same alcohol involved uh, alcohol involved accident. And, oh, um, shit. Yeah, he went through the same, and uh, I guess his ribs got stabbed into his lungs, <gasps> and he was still alive. He was still alive because we're low. Like, my family, we're, we're nuts, man. We're, uh, we're blessed, and whatever happened, he couldn't breathe, and when the cops came, they freaking they ended up having a lock. They had they didn't have to tie him down. They ended up slamming him, and from slamming him and beating him, that's how he died. Cause you I'm, imagine your rib being stabbed in your no, lung, sure. and you're sitting there trying to like explain to these, and they think you're trying to get away, and they handcuffed his ass while he was freaking had a lot, uh, and he freaking passed away. Wow. And so, um, uh, it's just, like I said, this is crazy, but it's uh. I remember my whole body started hurting, and I started thinking my organs were all messed up. So I, I started, I, I felt like I even felt his pain, and I just took out booking it. I just took out booking it. I jumped this big ass twelve foot fence. I had one shoe on. Uh, um, I, I jumped a fence and I ran through all, and I just started booking it to the neighborhood. But <laughs> my ass, like I went like that. I ran, and then I ran back this way. I don't know why I did that. And the cops come to pull me over or to like find me, and I'm all bloody or whatever. And the cop like shines his light on me and he's like, man, are you the one that got in the car accident? And like I said, man, I got a slick mouth. So I was like, man, I just got jumped right down the road there. They just beat me with some bats or whatever. And he just says, uh, he, he told me, he goes, uh, um, you know, your friend's dying, right? And I was just like, damn, is he okay? And then they, they, they locked me up, man. And um, yeah, I, I went to a prison for that. Talked to your vehicle to soap, man. Uh, and, uh, but listen to this. Well, you won't believe it. Anybody wants to say this, I'm gonna tell you the truth. My charges disappear. It's crazy, right? My whole statements, 
the Chargers, all they knew what my Chargers were, but every all the all the police statements, everything somehow just if it was control all delete, if it was in the computer, control all delete. If it was the book, somebody grabbed that and took that. I mean, I believe you have a super guardian angel that protects you. You have no idea. You have no I idea. I believe you have no idea what I believe in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm going to jail, like over there, man. Going to jail over there, or going to court in in uh, in, uh, in El Paso. It's horrible, man. They take you through this, like, man, it's a horrible process. They give you like these these buns all frozen still, and a bottle of milk, and they and they tra they take you from cages to cages, and then they they uh. They lock you up and they put you with like 10, 10 dudes and you have, we have to go to like underground and if one of them falls we all fall man and we oh, have to shit. go like what? down the, all these stairs underground to walk through and then we walk upstairs and we go to court at least one way when we go to one of the courts unless we go to the other court but yeah it was a I kept did anybody go, fall when you were <laughs> the, yeah yeah so I, I kept I had to go to court for like three weeks for like three weeks every day man that shit sucked because they didn't know they didn't even know what to do with me the judges they just knew that you were just there they, they just had my charges but they didn't have no call, no police statements, nothing. I didn't even know what the, the cop was looking. The, the judge was screaming at me like, like I had something to do with it, and I'm like, bro, I don't know. Just and he's he's screaming at his little dude, his little dude that he tells him what to do, and he's like, you guys are telling me like what is going on in this court, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? They didn't have they didn't have none of my charges, so um, I feel like they um, I feel like they targeted me. I feel like. Cause of that happened, like, like I said, I don't know, I don't know uh, my aunt. Did. Anyway, I want to get into that, but it's like I don't, I don't know what the hell happened to this day, and they freaking locked my ass down. I ended up doing like what, like 13, 14, 16 months in the hole, twenty three hours down, uh, twenty three hours in there. Over that, because yeah. they couldn't. No, 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 no. Like I, I went to I went to general GP general population, and uh, I almost got into it with this. Uh, to, I forgot what he was. I think he was like an Emma or something. Uh, and he, 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 uh, he uh, it was supposed to be our TV time. And he, he said, let us watch this movie. And as soon as this movie's over, um, it's our time. So as soon as the, the credits started coming up, because he was always scamming. That guy was always scamming like old men saying that he knew the judge and all kinds of stuff. And he was scamming <laughs> people and all kinds of stuff. So we, I was already aware with that. So I really didn't like them guys. Uh, or not, not, the, not, the, not the guy with the Emmet, but the other guy, the guy that was always with him. And uh, as soon as the credits came on, I went and changed the TV. And he grabbed my hand and he was like, he was like, hey, and I was like, don't ever touch my hand, brother. Like I do here, like I'm the most quietest when I do time. That's why they respect me. I, I shut up. I do my so time. So what, what did you, who do you run with? Uh, in Texas, I didn't run, there I didn't run with nobody. In Texas, I didn't run with nobody. But whenever I went to, uh, whenever I went, I'm sorry, whenever I went to the, the to the Pinta, I ran with uh, uh, Chuco Tango. Chuco Tango. It's like, I don't know if you heard of Tango Blast, uh, West Texas and all that. But I, since I fell out from El Paso, I ran, because uh, I, 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 I've always done business in El Paso. So I okay. fell off with uh, Chuco Tango is what they call them, Chuco Tango. Uh, shout out Chuco Tango and shit. We out there, man. We lit out there. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, after that, they, they put me in the hole. They put my ass in the hole. I did like, damn, 13, 14, 16 months in the hole, and man. And how was that, being, being by yourself for those for those uh, months? Because obviously, you know, you're not used to being locked in. Yeah, you're, man. you know, you're used to being out, running amok. You're on drugs. So, like, now you're, like, completely sober damn. and very isolated. And now you're by yourself. So, that gives you time to get to know you. Man, that's more. kind of the dangerous thing, man. You sit in there and, like, I don't know for whoever's done time or done time in the hole like that, man. Like, sheesh, you start talking to yourself, start telling jokes to yourself, man. Like, uh, we would have the little uh, the little kites where we would move the little the little wire. And, we, and, and like I said, I was still writing in there. I had this homie in there. Man, I wish I remember his name. Uh, we would, like, do, like, freestyle battles but on the paper. And he'd send me his battle on the paper. And we'd send it, like, I would just read in there, just work out, just write. I had, like... I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of music, man. Uh, uh, like gang and stuff of music, man. And, and was your family there for you this whole time? Because it seemed like you know, once you left your house, like you were just on your own by choice. Obviously, yeah, yeah. was your mom and your family oh, trying yeah. to be there My for Javita, you? They were the only ones that were there for me, man. And I still treated them like. Like, sh like shit, you know? But yeah, they were the only ones that were there, man. Like, my Javita was working her ass off the money that she didn't have. She was a, you know, God bless my I'm gonna give my mama everything. My mama everything. But, you know, she she was the one always bailing me out, man. She was the one always getting me lawyers and stuff, man. Because, you know, every time I get in trouble, I lose all my money. Or the homies had my money. And you know how that goes. They yeah. take, you know, I have nothing again, you know? And every time I come out, I have to just do it all over again. But yeah, uh... Um, you know, they were they were always there for me. They were always there for me, my mom and dad. 
Yeah. So you did your 18 months in the shoe or, you know, so solitary. You have a long time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened after that when you got out? Did you So, no, so check it out. So I was supposed to, I, I didn't want to sign. That's why I was in there so long because I didn't want to sign. I was like, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to beat this, you know. And uh, even towards the end, they still, once I didn't sign, like I said that they were messing with me. Even after I didn't sign, now they 24-hour locked down me. And that was horrible. You know, we already got an hour was already my grace time. And after that, I kept going to court and I wouldn't sign. Like, nah, I'm, I'm going to beat this. Y'all don't even have none of my shit. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to beat this. So they ended up 24-hour lockdowning me. And after that, that's when I kind of, they finally, I don't want to say broke me, but that's when kind of like, like, I was like, all right, bro, I don't know if I could do this no more. Like, yeah. like this is, this is like, this is like, this is crazy. Like, they're just like, they kept like, they kept like, when, all right. So going back, whenever I almost got into it with that one dude, um, they, they, after that, they said that I was, um, boss tanking or something like that. I forgot what they call it, like boss tanking. And I wasn't, bro, I'm telling you, most quietest person. And then after I did that, and after I went to lockdown, they ended up getting me in trouble for there. Oh, yeah, they caught some Benadryls, some Benadryls on me because we'd get the Benadryls and put it on our Sprite and <laughs> freaking get all high and shit, you know what I'm saying? And then that's why they 24-hour lock. But what was that question you just asked me? Oh, no, I asked you what happened once you got out of your 18 months. Oh, yeah, so uh, so um, after I did that time... Um, I finally ended up signing. I finally ended up signing. Because they broke you. Yeah, because they, yeah. They didn't break you. No, but, no. But, you know, you were, it's enough. But, enough to but, the 24 but hour lockdown. I got lucky because I my homie almost died. I got intoxicated, but the, the plea that they gave me was two years. And I had already done uh, 14, whatever. I don't remember. I don't remember the exact time, but it was like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 months, whatever the hell it was. But I had already done that time. So he's like, bro, you only have six, seven, eight months, whatever it was left. Mm-hmm. And you're going to put a roll. And I was like, but man, I don't, I'm going to beat this. And he's like, bro, just do it. And he finally did. They finally, he finally convinced me he's like man if you sign this right now you're about to be out of here in a couple of days bro just do it and i and finally i was like ah man and that's 24 that's hours all, that lockdown was only time i ever plead out of my life only time i ever plead out of my life so i was like you know what man f-. but check this shit out so i signed and even after i signed so i'm sitting in i'm sitting in i'm sitting in and i'm ready to get parole he's I'm, I'm supposed to be paroling out of there and out of nowhere they're they're calling chain and they call my name so i'm telling them i'm like hey bro like what's going on like i'm not even supposed to go to the pinta like what's going on well hey, i don't know bro but you're on the list and i'm so i'm like what the f-? and so i ended up you know catching chain i go to up there uh uh fucking texas tdc um uh, Middleton, I think that's what this was called. I, I go in there and book in, and when I get my freaking uh, my uh, time card is what they called it over there, I have two months back time and take it back to when I was in court. I even told the lawyer, make sure you get my back time. Please get my back time. Please get my back time. And, and he's like, all right, can we get, yeah, you have so many months of back time. And when I go, when I land in prison, I have two months on my back time. They didn't even write my back time down. So the whole, I was about to almost have to do uh, three and a half years, almost four years on a two in, two two oh on a on goodness. a two year sentence because for whatever reason my back time just disappeared. So the whole the, like everything else disappeared. Disappeared. So like exactly, bro. So it's like Your face. nah, because I uh, I <laughs> no, it's like you know what I'm yeah. yeah. But it's like I had to fight that whole time that I was in there, and like I said, man, they were messing with me the whole time. They kept sending me to location to location to location. <sighs> so you know how the mail has to follow you. So by the time like, and I remember I met these uh. Man, I wish I remember what they were. They were like legal, legal something. Cause I kept writing up over there like I-60s and all kinds of uh, I forget what they were called to get my back time. And everybody kept telling me, bro, it doesn't exist. You don't have back time. You don't have back time. You know, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. And You're like, like I said, that. I'm not, I'm not the one. So it's like. I'm sitting there, mama, que jevita, mama, que que rollo, like, what do we do? And, like, they they don't know nothing about this. I, that's all, they're the only people that I had. It like, really it was only me. Like, I'm really, I spent every time I was, all the time that I was in jail, I was in the law library. Law library, all the time, law library. So that's how I got, I got smart. I could be, I could beat cases. That's how I ended up beating all my other cases and stuff, man. And, uh, but anywho, uh, but yeah, I get to prison and, uh, I ended up, you know, getting in trouble. I ended up going to CD, CCA, South, South CCA. I ended up getting in trouble in CCA. The guards were messing with me there too. He kept, he would keep him, uh, elbowing me all the time. Like I said, like this is only my opinion, but I felt like, like they were like targeting me for whatever reason, man. And uh, I ended up telling them some stuff. I ended up getting a. Uh, 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 so on an officer, a bunch of stuff, and then I ended up getting G Ford, which is uh, I went to the Ferguson unit, is up there by Dallas and H Town. So you already know Dallas H Town, uh, Ferguson unit, man, Gladiator, man, it was 
Ooh, man, it was thugged out over there. It was crazy. It was crazy. I ended up, I ended up, and then I was fighting my whole case over there. And then the day that I was supposed to just charge for my two years, all of a sudden my time came back in, and they did, they, they they released me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The system is slow as. Crazy. The day that I was supposed to discharge, all of a sudden, and I remember that my mom, I called my jefita, and that lady called my jefita and said, uh, ma'am, ma'am, she's there even crying together because my mom was always trying to blow her up and was like, he, he got his time, he got his time, and she called me, and I was like, what the hell? And then they released me out of nowhere. Just boom, they released me in my two years. Because I, like I said, all I ended up signing was for two years. I ended up discharging the whole two years, man, out there. And, uh, so you didn't even get off on parole or anything? Nah, I discharged. Which was great. I discharged, yeah. Which was good because mm. you didn't have to report or anything. Yep. You just went home. I was supposed to beat that case, but like I said, it didn't work out that way. But uh, you went man, I went, I went through some things. That, that, that TDC, ah, tell me about damn that. Damn youngers. Them youngins are just loke, man. Them, them, you know, all them all thongle blasts, all them cats, boy. They, whoo, they're out there rowdy. Went, they went to this place called CCA. It was like a... Picture like a project. I think that was called CCA. Picture like the projects with a bunch of projects, like like a uh, like a you know like like three three story like with like a lot of tiers, bunch of rooms like that, but with like a big old fence around it. You know what I'm saying? It was like CCA was, was the people that didn't have that much time or were about to get released, and it was dope. Like we were able to like the doors were wide open, like all the rooms were like uh, like regular doors and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, man, we were in there just blazing and smoking K2 at the time that K2 was popping. Oh, my God. Which is that fake weed. Man, I had some crazy trips on that K2. But, yeah, uh, uh, I ended up getting in trouble in there. And ended up getting, and that's whenever I went to the, um, to G4 and all that. But, um, yeah, it was a. So, you, that's what happened to you in those three, two years. Yeah. So, then you got out. Because you got your time the same day you got out. And what happened when you got out? Man, whenever I got out, you already know you what back. it is, man. You, you went back on what, the grind. You know, know what time it is, man. Back on the grind, man. And uh, like I said, man, my my only vision was uh, just music. It's music. That's all I want to do. But now, at this time, whatever time it was when I got out of prison, finally, like, I was trying to do good. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I was trying to do good when I got out. I, I, I was uh, thinning de uh, trees with my dad. I was, we were making good money. But then it just wasn't it. This is like, you know, I was trying to work. I was trying to do that. I think I think I lasted, what, like two, three months, two, three months that time. That was the first time that I ever actually really tried to do good, man. And uh, it's just, I was living at my mama's house, you know what I'm saying? From our, being the, the boss, you know, before that, be, you know, being to young. living at my mama's house, you know? And it's just like, nah, man, this isn't it, it man. You. And uh, they had this ghetto-ass little trailer with dust in it, and it didn't have a ceiling, nothing on it, man. And uh, <gasps> yeah, it, uh, I had to get, like, extension cords from uh, the neighbor's house. Uh, and I, like I said, <laughs> I do what I do. Like, like within like two, three weeks, I had TVs everywhere with like ten different extension cords from the neighbor's house, you know. And uh, yeah, that's where it began. And I and I and uh, you know, I was doing, I was, I was grinding, man. My grind, my my purpose was just like I get this music, this music. And uh, so whenever I got, you know, finally. But wait, really quick. But when you're grinding, are you high? Nah. No, by by this time, whenever I told you, whenever I was young, that was that was it. That okay, was, that, didn't yeah, no, okay. no. Whenever I was okay. young, that that was the only time that I ever got high. Like, got uh, it. I ever got high. Like, yeah, actually, after I got out of prison, I didn't. I couldn't even smoke weed. I was fucked up in the head. I was messed up in the head. So I couldn't even. I couldn't even. Like, I would smoke weed and I would start tripping. I would okay, start okay. tripping. Just you know, I just want to get clarification. Yeah. And people are like, hmm, nah, 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 nah. You know? nah I, whenever I was young, that was the last time I okay, ever, I ever, okay. uh, I ever got high. I stopped doing all that. I even, even yayo, all that. Uh, it was just a lesson. I I never really liked anything. I think it was just a lesson to God that God wanted me to, you know. I I I got that out of my out of my system whenever I was young. You know, okay, I was okay. young when I got that out of my system. So, so you're you're out. You you know you're working. You were working with your dad, and you know that wasn't enough for you. Obviously, you yeah. know that's not what you're used to. You yeah. want more money. Mm -hmm. You know you want to help your parents. Yeah. Did you so, help them? Um. Yeah, I try to, but like I said, it's just like we don't listen to nothing to us, you know, to our no, as older. as far as like to, giving them money. I actually seen a a, a a thing you said, and you were and like not to get like emotional about that. I remember you were crying about that on the post because because of, of the things that we do, man. And it's, and I I felt that I was watching the whole interview that you did, and I I was the same way. It's like. Like I love my mom. I I want. I'm gonna give her the world. Like I give her the world. Like now I, you know, I send her five, ten bands every here and there, man. And uh, but it's like at the time, it's just like, you know, that's not our. Even though that's what we want and our purpose is right, but you know, you get so lost in this damn game, man, yes. that you're just kind of like, 
she, man. Sometimes I don't know what the hell it is that we're thinking. Yeah, we're you, not. You it's know, thing, it's but... like we're thinking our heart is right and we want to do the right thing, but it's just like we're really doing the wrong thing, thinking that it's right, you for know? For sure, for sure. And it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, but I, I would try to, but nah, I'm not, not even going to lie to you. Like, even like my kids, I got three, four kids. Like, I wasn't really even there in their life that much because I was locked up the first eight, nine years of their lives, you know, and then towards the end, they were already, you know. And you had the kids after you got out of your term. This is, nah, this is when I got out of the halfway house. I was in the halfway house. You know, so I got a halfway house. As soon as I got a halfway house, when I was 18 years old, I had three, four kids. You know, oh, back to back. Shit. Different baby mamas, yeah. Different baby mamas and stuff, man. And, uh, yeah. But, um. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're out, you get out, you're with your dad, you're working. You're like, okay, this is not enough. You start doing your thing again. How long after you start doing your thing again? So, man, check this out. So, I'm grinding. I'm doing good. Got a nice little beamer. Got a nice little house, man. And uh, I got a little trailer. And it's just, it's just, it's just beautiful how God works for me. You know, God's always saved me. You know, you know, I could have been way worse right now. And you know, even though I was in some messed up uh, positions, but it's like God always let me get in trouble, but He wouldn't let me fully get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like He put me in. Uh, he put me in situations that were like kind of like I would get in trouble. So I think it was like four years after that, three, four years. I was doing good. I was doing good. I was grinding. I was doing my thing, man. And um, and one day I went to the uh, to the casino. I was out there at the casino, man. And uh, I had this white girl, man. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you all the greedy shit, man. She was so bad. She was so bad, man. And uh, and we were about to, you know, you know, fuck or whatever. And I didn't have a condom. So she's like, no, I can't. So I was like, damn, whatever. Anyways, the next day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least she was a dirty one. Yeah, yeah. So she wouldn't let me. I was like, come on. Anyways, we ended up falling asleep. I wake up in the morning. I go to my spot. And... I have this bong, this big ass bong, and I have this little uh, 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 a pin that you t you put at the bottom of the uh, at the bong, and you and you like put the wax in it, mm -hmm. and you hit the bong, and it was the first time I ever smoked wax ever. No, I'm lying to you. It was like the second, third time I ever smoked wax, and I take a big old bong rip, and I'm fucking, <laughs> and I'm like crying. I'm like, all right, one more, one more, and I go and take one more hit, and when I go and take one more hit, all I hear is, open the fucking door, open the fucking door, and I'm just like, damn, I'm getting hit. I'm hit. I'm getting raided, man. Shit. I'm getting raided, man. And I remember, I remember I was just like, my thoughts were like, damn, flesh is shit. But damn, they got guns in you. Damn, and not. Or I'm still coughing. And I'm still like, hunting <laughs> cops. And I'm like, shit's barely hitting my brain, you know. For anybody that smokes wax, I just hit a big ass bong rip out of this, out of this bong, you know. And it's barely hitting my brain. I'm getting raided and stuff. Damn. Like, like, once again, like when the shroom story, like my, my, to, that's my exactly brain. That's exactly what I was thinking Every time right my now. brain wasn't working right, man. Like, every time. It happened to me every time. And uh, I'm sitting there taking big ass bong rips, man. And, uh. Yeah, they, they ended up raiding me, whatever, man. And uh, who raided you? Uh, the sheriffs, the sheriffs from Lincoln County Sheriffs. Okay. Yeah, the Lincoln County Sheriffs, man. And then uh, they raided me, and I remember them telling me like, but that this is the thing about it. Like, if you look at my uh, if you look at my uh, discovery, they were looking for uh, I'm not gonna say whole ass name, but his name. They're looking for this dude, and uh, and um. They asked me, is he in there? And I was like, nah, he's not in there. And that's what I did say. I remember, I know that, you know, if you give them consent to do something, they can only go for the consent that you gave them for whatever it is that they're looking for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I understood that in my head. But I'm still, I'm telling you, I'm still coughing. I'm still kind of coughing. And I'm like, man, I know nobody's in here. But I had a sawed off shotgun on my table. I had, you know, luckily, thank to God, I already got rid of everything and the way that it worked. But no, no, let me take this back a little bit. Three months before that, I had changed my life around. I had, no, maybe like two months. I had already quit. I stopped. I got out the game. I bought my little, my tia's house, or at least I was going to start renovating it and start bettering myself. I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. I I, I had a little studio. I was really about so to So you start, got your studio. Yeah, I had already got my, I got it. After I got out of Pinta, I got it like three, like three months after that, you know, so after, I, after I got out of Texas and um, I had my studio. I got my shit together. I, I started going to church with my jefita. Never. I started, you know, talking to my... I, I left all the girlfriends that I had to go, and I was going to change my life around. And then, and you know how the devil works? The plug kept calling me. Hey, hey, we got this. And then the homie, hey, I need this. Hey, I need this. Hey, I got this. Let me drop these. And I'm like, nah, I'm out the game. I'm out the game. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And I needed a little bit of money for the, for the studio. So it's like... Damn, and I'm like, fuck it, one more time. Let's do it. Boom, run a, a little quick move, you know, made a little play, made a little bit of money. Boom. The second time, it happened again. So, like, you know what? 
But he didn't want an ounce or whatever it was, you know, it was methamphetamine. That's what I got in trouble for. It was an ounce left, the guy that didn't want it. And that's what I got in trouble for. I had already changed my life around. I had already done everything. I had already got my house. I was already going to get in the studio, chasing my dreams. And for whatever reason, I just, I wanted to get a little bit of the extra money. And that's what happened. That's how I got into trouble. I, you know, I was already out. And, but anyway, so, yeah, they, they ended up going to my house, uh, uh, flipping everything, man. And, uh, and uh, yeah. They found just a little tiny. Just a little bit of everything, just enough to give me. But, uh, oh, but I'm already a felon in possession. So that's what I went to the feds for. Felon in possession of a firearm and stuff. But it's. But why did they charge you as a federal charge? A felon in possession of a firearm. Really? So, and then, oh, because it was a blitz. Or is it because of the state you're in or something? Uh, and it was me. It was a cousin who I was. They couldn't uh, be like, I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, I, I was smart. So they've been wanting me. My little town, they've been wanting me. So it's like. Got it. Like, uh,. Uh, some snitch stuff happened with this dude, man, where he set me up. And I think he's the one, I, I know he's the one that sent me. I never even looked into it, but he sent them over there with me, man. And, uh, and, um, uh, wait, what about my bad? What was the question you just asked me? I was just fucking spaced out. No, 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 you're good. Shit. Cause I asked, um, why did you go to the feds? And oh, you yeah, just, yeah. And you just told me because they've been oh, wanting you. Because no, of, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. F- a fake statement. The whole statement that they made was false. Everything. So they said that they came in. Uh, they said that they came in and did a knocking, knocking, knocking something tactic. What the hell did they call it? Knock on the door tactic. And they said that I that they came and knocked on the door. That I opened it and that I was like, yeah, guys, come inside. That's the only reason I went to the feds. And then once they found the, they found dope. Uh, they found Isotol. Man, I'm about to man, I'm about to I'm about to tell y'all. They found. Uh, uh, a pound of isotol I don't even know what that is Isotol You know what that is Isn't it's, that the shit You make the meth it's with It's cut No no it's cut It's cut for the yayo Okay They charged me for a pound Of freaking yayo And it wasn't even yayo It was it was isotol It was isotol And I only had like That much yayo on me I only had like This much yayo on me I had some meth And some money And uh and some weed A little bit of weed And the whole way They read the statement It was all false The whole way That they read the statement That they said it I was, I was hit Oh And wow. once again the, every time that I was in jail, I lived in the law library. You hear me? I was in there. I seen everybody. I seen all the things, all the corpses, people that got away. You see innocent people go to jail. You see freaking mafiosos get released. And I learned from everything because I was always in and out of prison. You know, I'm sorry, in and out of a county and, uh, you know, around all those people, man. And uh, But, yeah, I freaking um, uh, went to jail. I went to the... You went to the feds? Went to the feds for that shit, yeah. So how long did you go to the... How, how, what was your sentence? Um, I fought it in there. I fought. I fought my case for a year, and um, my discovery. I had my discovery in there, and I would read my discovery every day, man. I remember seeing it like for whoever uh, I was uh, repping Nueva. Hey, shout out Nuevo. Shout out everybody in the Nuevo, man. I, I you know, I was, I was writing with Nuevo in there, uh, but um. I don't know, you know, anybody who done Fed time, it's a little crazier in there. It's a little bit more intense, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a little bit more intense, you know. Nobody beats no Fed cases and stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm blessed to say that, you know, I know rat nothing. I'm the 2% of the world population that's beat a Fed case, and I can say that with, you know, with my heart, you know what I'm saying? Because I told my lawyer, uh, man, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just, it's just, you're bringing back a lot of memories. So my, uh, I lost everything. I lost everything. I didn't have no money, nothing. And one day, my jefita was talking to this rich lady. She would do a lot of rich ladies' hairs, a lot of rich ladies' hair. And uh, everybody kept telling me that they were going to help me, that they were going to help me, that they were going to help me, that they were going to help me. And uh, ain't nobody was going to help me, man. And this one, my one of my friends had got an inheritance, and she was going to help me. And one day, um, uh, my mom was doing this rich lady's hair, and the lady was telling her how her husband had just got killed. Uh, they had a, the, he was like sick or whatever, and. Um, the lady that was taking care of her husband pulled the plug, pulled the plug on him and died. But right before he pulled the plug, he said, hey, sign this $50,000 check. And if you don't if you don't sign this $50,000 check, I'm going to pill. And he signed the check and he killed it. So they're sitting there crying about it, whatever. Oh, dang. Yeah, this older lady. And then I had like, I had got out on bail. Before all this, I had got out on bail. And I was going to change my, I had changed my life around. I had started a one last chance, 777.com program. Uh, a, a non-profit organization I was gonna try to do a hip-hop A hip-hop uh, thing for the kids You know, I like For finding in my life This is when I kind of started for, uh, You know, 
uh, trying to start doing the things the right way. Because whenever I got out on bond, that lady told me, she said, "Mijo, you see me like you come from a good family. Like don't, 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 just don't. You know, stay away from everything. Just do it right." And I did. I remember I used to cry in my studio. I didn't have once again go back to living in my mama's house. You know, and I didn't have nothing. And uh, and I was trying to, man, it was a lot of beautiful things. I had the whole town backing me up, man. I was doing all this stuff. I, they were about to donate me like $30,000, man. Like, it was crazy. And I remember telling my lawyer about it. I remember telling my lawyer about it. I was like, man, I'm like, I don't expect y'all for to just slap, give me a slap in the hand, but I know what I'm doing right now. I have my whole town behind me. What if we could turn something positive into something negative? And I told her my whole thing, and she didn't have nothing to say. She was like, well, I'm going to see I'm gonna see what we could do. You know, I'm going to see what we could do. And then, whatever. She called me like a week later, and... um. She was like, all right, um, I've talked to the DA. We're going to be able to help you. And I was like, oh, what, what, what? And she was like, yeah, you just got to tell us who's doing who, who's doing what, and, and we got you. And I was just like, man, that wasn't the answer that I really wanted. You know what I'm saying? Technically, yeah. they wanted me to snitch. For sure. So what I do? I flipped my bracelet off, man, and uh, went on the run. Then went back to jail. And then uh, when I was in there, um, you know, I, I went, and then I, I still went on the run on federal bond, Having the, the feds are looking for me, and I still catch more goddamn charges on on the run. Like a week later, I got fucking pulled over, man. And uh, damn, it was crazy, man. And I'm sitting there in jail. And uh, anyway, so I'm sitting there fighting it. At, at, at first, I'm not gonna lie to you, I I knew it was over. You feel me? Like I knew it was over. Like I knew it was over. And um, you know how like when you do time. You kind of got to set your mind to like, hey, I'm about to do this time. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, you just kind of lock it in. Accept that. But I couldn't this time. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, I don't know. It just, I just couldn't lock in. Like in my heart, I was like, you want to be out here selling dope? This is it, G. Like, you know, yeah. do your time, homie. Huh? Like, you, you ain't no f rat. Time to do your time, do your time G. And, uh, but I, it just, in my heart, I just, I couldn't lock it in this time. I couldn't like... I don't know. It was just God telling me something like, nah, mijo, like it's not time, you know? And uh, so I started getting into my discovery and my discovery and my discovery. I had no books, the, the letters, the, the words that I didn't even know what they meant. I had on my whole discovery, everything highlighted, what they said, who, what, when, where, why, what a motion to suppress evidence is and everything. And I remember even like everybody that was in there with me, man, I would, I, I, you know, I was always, a, I was always like, a, I mean, I was in there working out with the top dogs, Sudeños, bro, you know, like they're, you know, working you know, 200 burpee a day, you know, uh, but even they were telling me, like, gee, you're not going to beat it. You're not going to beat it. No one beats his charges. Like, they were even kind of getting a little, like, weird because it's like, I was like, nah, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But, and then I would go back into my shit and just shit, like, whatever. And I'm, I'm going to try. So when I, out of nowhere, that lady that I was telling you that was going to give me a lawyer, she bought me a lawyer. Some random lady bought me a lawyer. Some, some random lady bought me a lawyer, man. And, um, I don't know where this lawyer comes into my. No, my mama. I keep talking. My, I keep telling my my jefita. I keep talking to my jefita, and she kept telling me like, "Mijo, this lady wants to help you. Mijo, this lady wants to help you. Mijo, this." And everybody wanted to help me, so I was like, "Yeah, mama, huh, cool, cool, whatever." And it, it took like two, three months to finally tell me. And one day she was like, "Mijo, this lady wants to help you," and I was like, "Man, fuck it." I started getting all the all the all the list of the lawyers. We started calling all of them, and I finally got them down to the five ones. I had to do the hundred fifty dollars for the. Uh, the, the the fee for the to talk to him or whatever, and uh, I talked to everybody, and then bam, I came down. Uh, Mary Stillinger, damn, I don't know how I remember her name. And she came one day, and she came one day, and and she was sitting in the in the room with me, and, and she was like, you know, um, so this is happening and off the rip. I told her, ma'am, check it out. If you're gonna come out here, tell me some bullshit, tell me whatever, get the fuck out of here respectfully, because I understand if they came up to me and said, Mr. Reyes, uh, we know what you've been doing, what I know what I was doing. Uh, uh, it's time to do your time. But that's not what happened. They violated my Fourth Amendment and they an illegal search and seizure me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, like, don't come at me with no plea deals. Don't come in. I know that I'm gonna do this. We either get in life, you're get, we're taking this to trial and getting the rest of my life, or we're being this charge because they were trying to mix the dope, the dope with the with the gun, and that's like an enhancement. Or I don't know if you know the feds mm -hmm. and all that. So they were trying to do all that. So that's why I think that's why I went to feds to the feds the way they 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 rid it, they rid it, and then. Um, yeah, she kind of like after I told her, I told her, I told her this joke. I told her, uh, "What does a fish and a lawyer have in common?" And she's like, "What?" And I was like, "One of them's a, a bottom feeding scum sucker, and the other one's a fish." And they're like, "Whatever, you know." And uh, yeah, and uh, and I was like, "Whatever, man." I was like, "Please, ma'am." I told her my whole story, and I was like, "Ma'am, if you're here to help me, help me. If not, please respectfully get the fuck up out of here, cause I know what I know what's really going on." Yeah. And she just kind of looked at me like, 
Like, oh shit. Like, all right. So she's like, you know what? We're not gonna take this lady's money. Uh I'm gonna come back to you to to, you know, whatever, you know, and I'm gonna see if I can beat it. And yeah, yeah. She came two weeks later, man, and uh and uh she's like, I think I could beat your case, and, you know, like I said, I'm a heart at the time, so it's like I wanted to get happy, you know, but I'm like But you were afraid cool, to actually bro, feel to it. actually feel it, man. And uh shit, I imagine the minimum they were gonna give me was twenty five years in the feds, you know. So it's like um yeah, so I, I. So what I, happened? What did you? So you went to court on your sentencing date, and they you they let you go home? No, no, no. So I took him to suppress evidence, suppress okay. a motion to suppress evidence, and uh, yeah, I took him a motion to suppress evidence. Man, it was the craziest court of my life. It was like a sour, seven hours court, man, and uh, we, we uh, um, all the officers, the three officers that were in there, uh, we we cross examined them, all of them, and. Man, they didn't even know what to say, man. Like, they were just like... Because you, you were on top of yeah, your shit. Yeah, because I was on top of my shit. Not only that, they, everything that they said was a lie. Oh, oh. so before that, uh, we had just watched the whole audio and the video. In front of, you know, there was a DA, the judge, me, the lawyer. I think that's the only ones that were in the room. And we watched the whole vi- the, 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 the lapel camera video. We watched the whole camera. So off the rip, you know, off the rip, the, all the officers were pointing guns at me. Even when I all hired to open the door, they were all pointing guns at me and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, um, um, uh, you know, off the rip, the, 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 the officer said, oh, well, you know, I seen Mr. Reyes. We had our gun at the 45 degree angle fucking some shit, whatever the heck they call it. And then all the judges already seen that they were like this, but he's sitting there, they're sitting lying to everything that we just finished seeing. And I'm sitting there like, oh, oh this shit, is like this is really happening. And that, that, that they that I just we just went and knocked on the door. They meant, they, the way they wrote it in the police statement is um, they came and knocked on the door, but they didn't say that they pointed all the guns at me. Which they did, you know what I'm saying? And then so um, basically just withheld information. They lied. They the made whole up things. Statement, was, like on my mama, the whole statement that they wrote was false. Everything that they wrote was false. Till I brought that. This is how crazy this case was because of who. But I'm telling you, I know it's because of who I was. They wanted me, and they were trying to. They just thought that I was some some f- skin that they were just. I'm the right one. You know what I'm saying? I'm the <laughs> right one. So um, when I go to uh, when I when I go to court. Like, like, like I said, it was just, eh, it was just, it was just crazy. These memories are just, you know, memories that I've tried to put behind. It. It's, it's Sometimes kinda, it's okay to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I, I love it. Cause that's where I'm at the point in my life. You know, it's just like, um, shit, man. It's just, it's just kind of get, you having flashbacks. Nah, I, I used to, uh, shake when I used to talk about this stuff, man. And it's just oh, like, wow. I feel like this is the reason why I came on here. It's time. I've stayed quiet the whole line. Like, you know what it's like, you know, like in the hood, I'm good. Everywhere in the streets, everywhere I'm okay. But you know, you know how people start talking. If somebody came up to me and said they beat a fed case, you know what I'm saying? Off yeah, the rip, I've, like. Because I've been bruh, to the feds, so it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Too. Like, cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, this shit really happened. I really beat the feds and I really took it down. The DA had to apologize to the judge before my motion to suppress even happened. The DA went to the judge and told him, oh, what did he say? He was all like, uh, Your Honor, I'm sorry for even bringing this case in front of you. And boom, boom, boom. And like, wow. let's, let's start this case. Because that's how messed up the case was. It was crazy. Just Cops are a, a motherfucker. Blessing, man. They they were really just were trying to end me, man. And uh, yeah. So how did it go? Like, how did you get free? <sighs> man. So like, I took them to motion to suppress evidence, right? And then uh, so they were like, bam, you gotta wait for it to happen, all right? So bam, I I forgot how much how long it was after that. The longest days of my life. I think it was like thirty, sixty days after that that I was still sitting in there. Wow. And I was just like, you know, every day is just like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The most mm-hmm. and out of nowhere, they're like, call me like, yo, you want your motion to suppress evidence? Wow. You want your motion to suppress evidence? And I'm just like, you know, you know, like we're in the feds. It's serious in there, you know? No, so it's yeah. like, I can't, you can't even like express that because, you know, it's just like. Just never know who's next People to you. are in there just like, you know, like just like waiting for a reason for you to, to and it was super serious, man. And like, so I'm like, bet, let's, let's wait. So uh, 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 I think it was like on a Thursday, uh, Saturday. Sunday came, Monday came, Tuesday came, Wednesday came. I'm still sitting in there like, hey, I finally called her like on a Wednesday. Like, hey, what happened? They were like, oh, all right, well, it's a 30-day process. You have to wait 30 days. You have 30 days to appeal it. So I'm like, bet, what 30 days? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you already been sitting there. Yeah, I've already been sitting there. I think I did end up doing like a year or something like that, uh, uh, fighting my case. Uh, 30 days went through. Um, I'm sitting there. 
So yeah, I'm waiting for my appeal. So they're like, all right, they got 30 days to appeal it. So bam, all right, 30 days. What's 30 days? So bam, 30 days come by. And after they already told me the first time that I already dismissed it. So I'm already like, I'm going to get out in a couple of days. You know, imagine that feeling know, of yeah. in your heart that you're just like, this, uh, I'm the rest of my life. I had, already, I had already locked that in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I had already locked that in my heart that I was going to do the rest of my life or however long I was going to do in there. And then this lady comes out of nowhere and gets this lawyer. So it's like, God, you know what I'm saying? It's just, and, then, and then so bam, so 30 days come. Man, you beat the appeal, you beat the... No, wait up, wait up. Did they tell me they beat my appeal that time? Yeah, I think she did tell me the 30 days later that I beat my appeal. So I'm like, bam, again, I'm about to get released. I'm going to get released. And then it was like two, two, three days after that, she came that she did, they did, they did, that they did. The Supreme Court appealed my shit. <sighs> so I'm like, my whole heart just dropped. Not only that, I don't have no money. The contract, um, the contract um, uh, doesn't have the appeal for the lawyer in the you know for the whatever deal that we for the lawyer so now I have to rehire a lawyer and it's another 15 bands where the hell am I gonna get 15 bands from you know I already lost everything I've already been there a year everybody my mama don't have nothing no more you know it's like I don't have no 15 bands and then but the good thing about that is when they give you a pill um you have technically you're probably gonna get a bond you're gonna get a bond when you're I don't know if you know that but when you're in the field I don't know if it's technically you're gonna get a bond but your, your, your chances are really high to get a bond because pretty much you already like kind of already beat it or whatever but you haven't so they give you a you higher so we go to court I think they give me uh, $10,000 on the bond and then my mom was like I only have $1,000 and the judge was like you know what I'll take that give us $1,000 and they release me on bond on the on a thousand dollar bond wow uh, yeah thousand oh, dollars so they tell boom i got out on a bond on that thing so they put me on the uh that probation the um like when you first get out on a on a preliminary what the hell do they it's call like it formal probation not like a little temporary probation we have to do all the drug tests and all that mm -hmm. shit and then uh so i'm sitting there in court so imagine the first of all the lady tells you, you're gonna get released and you don't get released and then 30 days later you're gonna get released and then you get appealed ah. and then you lose your lawyer and then you finally get a bond so i'm like ah i get out and then i get out and then i'm out for like a week or two weeks and then i go to check in the second time and then she tells me uh um they dropped your case <gasps> so i go get messed up i go get trashed right i go get messed up smoking all kinds of weed but check this shit out Three, four, five days later. Oh no! So we try to get our bond, our bond money back. So we go and hit the bond money, try to get the bond money back. And when we called the bond lady, he said they picked. I don't know if they picked it up. They like, I don't know exactly what happened. It was like a lot of But this is what they told me. So they like re-picked it up. I don't know what happened, but they said, oh, never mind. It's not dropped yet. So I gotta go check in again. Dude, and you're dirty imagine now. the emotions, like what they're doing to me. No, yeah, you're you feeling me. Going imagine, some imagine, stuff, the, sure. imagine just the. Uh, Emotional trauma from that shit, man. It's just you know I've, I've never been the same. I barely, I'm barely getting my head together now. It's been like six years or seven years since that happened. You know? Oh, wow. It's, yeah, it's like six years. I'm barely right now getting my head together. It's from hard, that. you know. And these are all situations that we put ourselves through. Yeah. You know, and we want oh you know because of a mistake or whatever. In reality, like bro. Yeah. We did this shit to ourselves. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm not saying this is what you're doing, yeah. but like, you know, this is yeah. the trauma that we caused. Yeah. But we kind of want to blame the system sometimes. Yeah. We just got to accept shit for what the fuck it was. Man. You know, but it's like, it is traumatizing yeah. to us because, yeah. bro, like, imagine, like, you're fighting for your life. I mean, I, I, imagine I'm imagining. Imagine facing 25 years and then it's I, just like up, down, up, down. That's what up, I'm saying. Down. Like, it's you're just, like going through this mental roller coaster yeah. and it's messed up up mm. and you're out and you're still like man should i go check in because what if i go check in and it's like they're gonna take me so mm. what happens so i finally told him send me the paper <laughs> like send me the what's it called the no no lay prosecute or whatever no lay prosecute because you know what papers yeah you i was like yeah. send me the paper i need a signature from the judge boom and i got that and i and i, and I beat the goddamn case man yes. i beat it you know what i'm saying i beat my case man and uh Man, but it's, it it was that was that was barely the beginning of my story. Still, you know, it's like, eh, I I uh, and I ended up suing them. I ended up suing them. And I only got a hundred bands out of them. I could have got millions out of them, but I didn't have no kind of money like that. Man, they did me dirty. They made me sign a. They made me sign a uh, a thing saying, "Hey, just shut up. Don't say nothing. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Just shut the f 
up. If I would have waited a couple years, I would have made millions off that shit. I would have made some meals off that. But hundred bands, that come on, nothing. bro. Like, I mean, but at the time, to me, like, oh, yeah, you know, you like, the money, yeah. I, I was just, I, really, it was just all the money that they took from me. Technically, you know what I'm saying? But shit, technically, they. Because it's a lot of money. To be it? real with you, man, I can say this because they they gave me they they literally just washed my drug money. You know, they gave me freaking legit money through the lawsuit, and that's when it all started. And I. Uh, but I was messed up, man. I was, I tried to be okay, and I was Aww. not. I was not okay, man. I I'm still really not, you know. And it, and it, it like it's been hard, man. It's been a uh, it's been uh, and a journey. I, I couldn't even like leave my house, man. I couldn't even like like my anxiety. I'd had I used to get these like these like seizures, anxiety, <gasps> man. Where it was like I was just like like my whole body would just like. And I ended up buying a a, a a ranch with that. That was a beautiful thing that came out of it. I bought a ranch with that money. I bought a beautiful 10-acre ranch, man, a river on it. Uh, I nice. had my little cars. I started raising my own chickens. I, I cut everybody off. Even my head feet, everybody. It's just, I just, I could, I, no, no one mm-hmm. could really deal with me. I was, I was not okay. I was, I, I was not okay. I was just kind of like screaming in the goddamn Shower, um, man, and just like uh, is I couldn't understand it. Like I'm a G, you know what I'm saying? I'm a low, I'm a real G for real. And it's like that's one thing that I couldn't beat. It's like I could, I could, I could beat everything besides the only the only person that beat my beat me is who? Is myself? You. you know, myself, man. And 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 uh, there's nothing in the world that could ever take me down but myself, man. And I was and I finally had to. I quit drinking. I quit smoking after a while. I quit partying. I even freaking I turned into like a monk. I even quit looking at women perversely. I even quit, like, I started raising my own chickens. I had uh, 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 10 dogs, a mini pig, a mini horse. Uh, I had, like, a 100 by 50 foot of, of field of vegetables that I started growing, man. I uh, I don't know what oh, wow. the hell I was doing. Yeah, it was beautiful, big old, beautiful uh, uh, um, pasture down there, peach trees, plum trees, man. And, uh, you know, technically, I just found myself out there. I kind of found myself out there for, like, three, four years, Um Good for yeah. you. Yeah, I mean. So where are you at now? Now, so you know, this is where it all begins. You know, like I said, this is like my story is crazy. I have a crazy testimony, you know. And after that, you know, so before all this happened, go back to the feds when I was in the feds and never I got out. I made a promise. You know, I make promises and I and I really mean it. I keep them. You know, I made a promise with God. I told God, you know, like this is who I am, God. But just. Please, you you let me out of the situation. I'm gonna change my life around. I'm gonna change my life around. You know what I'm saying? And I and I did. I uh I got. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I first when I first got, I actually ended up going harder. I used to drive around with two Glocks. That if I got pulled over, I was gonna start booking at the cops. I was gonna make them kill me. And then oh one, shit. Yeah. And then one day I uh um my girlfriend's little girl. This is crazy. <laughs> my girlfriend's little girl uh comes up to me one day. And just grabs me and she goes, Lucky, I love you. And at that moment, like, she woke up something in me. Like, I just started shaking. I go, <gasps> like, I was so just dead inside, just so cold hearted that, like, I don't know. I had nothing left in me. I had no love in me no more. I had the, the only love I had in me, I had the, the whatever my mom and dad taught me, but after, I didn't have no love in me. And after that, you know, and uh, this little girl saved my life. I changed my life. I got out the dope and after that. I, could, I still went hard after I got out of the feds. I still kept crying. But grinding him to that little girl, no fans, no nothing could stop me. To a little, to a little four-year-old girl came up to me and and, and hugged me, and um, I t- literally just got out the dope. I called the plug. I said, "Bro, I don't give a fuck. I owe you money. Come get it, whatever. But I'll give it to you when I got it." They wanted to kill me and do all this stuff, but they they understood I was a good dude. It they, they wasn't like that, so it's they ended up calling me back like, "Hey, G, just take your time. Just get get at me when you get at me, bro." And uh, that's when my that's when my life changing started started and. Um, like I said, uh, I uh, I started really, you know, uh, my buddy would always tell me, you know, your mind is the, your mind, you you are what you, you are what you think, you know what I'm saying? You are what you think, you are, you, you, you all that anxiety you have, and I'm like, come on, bro, like, I'm just supposed to wake up and be like, hey, today's going to be a better day, you know, like, from the way that I, I mean, that's really how it is, yeah, I know. you know, but at the time, you know, like, I was like, yeah, bro, like, I'm just supposed to just say that with my lifestyle, and just today is going to be fucking super you know and uh he really was right yeah. you know he, he always had his voice and one day you know i went and stubbed my toe and i had a horrible anger issues horrible anger issues and uh uh i um i was like i was about to get pissed and i was like i just heard his voice your day your life is what you make it your day is what you make it man and um I did. I started shaping my mind after that, and every time I would get angry, every time I would just be like, "Rainbow's unicorn, Rainbow's unicorn!" Like, don't get mad, don't get mad. 
And uh, I ended up moving. I reached like a, a peak of my life where it's like, I feel like in that little town where I was at, like I was doing good. I had my ranch, I had everything I was doing. I was still, I was still fucking with the weed, whatever, but you know, but uh, um, I reached like a little peak and I needed to leave. And I had a big old grow room and everything and I just left. I left, I grabbed all my clothes, I grabbed everything, I left my lights on, I left everything and I just dipped. I just dipped and I moved to Albuquerque. And um, that's where I was able to recreate myself. You know, this is where I really my story come. I don't know if you know who Cali Plug is. You know who that is? Cali mm -hmm. Plug. Uh, I came to those sessions where he had out there. Cali Plug sessions. And, uh, and bam, you know, I come from getting, you know, the P's for like 25, 2,000 to six, 700. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you know, started getting to it. And I started getting into the private sessions, the pop is, you know, started making the, uh, the brands and uh I, I finally like made it or whatever. I had a badass like five thousand dollar Airbnb. I was still renting it, and I remember I was in that, and I was like, man, it's time to do something right. Like, what are you gonna do? And, and you know, shout out Cali Plug and Drew. Um, but uh, I was like, do what they're doing. Become the New Mexico Plug. You know what I'm saying? And I started speaking, speaking positive to all the kids, man. And I and I picked up the. I uh, you know I come from a, a flip phone. You know I come from a flip phone to. Uh, so having this phone and I started speaking positive to all the kids, man. And uh, I went viral overnight. Just, being, you know, hey, I had the gold teeth and chains, and, you know. And, uh, hey, man, you know, I did it. I, I be a fed case. I did it. And I look at me, guys. I'm out here speaking to y'all, man. You, If I could do it, man, it went crazy. It went crazy. I went literally went viral. I went like... Like viral, viral, you know, like viral, like the things that you dream about, like superstar stuff. Like I already did that, you know, like I literally was like, I did the pop ups. I had the sessions. I was doing giveaways. Uh, uh, like I said, I learned that from uh, I technically did everything Cali Plug did. Started doing the giveaways, the stashes, the money giveaways. The uh, I would go to, I would go into like the parking lots at the Home Depot one time. I shout out Albuquerque and I, and I had like half a pound a pee or whatever. And I'd be like, and I'll stash like ounces everywhere. And I'd be like, all right, right here in this parking lot. Thousands of people would pull up. Thousands of people. Thousands. When I say thousands, I'm not exaggerating. I'm talking about like the craziest dope. Like <laughs> I would even almost cry sometimes because like, you know, coming from like, and this is a beautiful thing about it, is like nobody really knows the past me. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And it's like that was who I was, and I was kind of like, I'm not gonna lie, till this day I, I still can't even fully leave my past behind. But at least I was able to somehow kind of do it, you know. And I don't think you could ever leave your past behind. Nah, man. I don't and think it's a good thing to leave it behind. Yeah, you're right. You're right because I actually kind of did. I made me forget who I was, and I became too humble. And then when I became too humble, like it was good, man. I bought me a mansion. I bought like a. I, I was gonna bring my bus over here. I bought a bus. Like I was, I was getting it. I was getting to it. the merchandise was going crazy. Everything I was touching was just turning to gold, you know. Only Snapchat. No content, no nothing. Not in the Instagram, no Twitter, no nothing. Just freaking talking from, just talking. Like oh, I was wow. the whole, like everybody, I used to wake up to like 500 messages, positive messages. Like, bro, you changed my life around. Bro, I quit doing dope because of you. Bro, 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 bro. Like, like literally three, four, five hundred messages every morning of people's lives that I'm changing. You know, to this day, this was what, two, three years ago. To this day, I still have messages, bro. Like, because I, because they, like, uh, this is where I wanted to tell you where I was going to get into this is, uh, I got, I was doing so good. I blew up just doing positivity out of nowhere. I tried to get into the dispensary game and try doing a dispo, and I feel like that's who did it. I, I feel like they didn't like me, and I got blackballed out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, everybody just started calling crazy names, calling me a snitch and calling me that, and I started getting like, and people started sending messages about me saying that I was this and I was that, and at the time, I am who I am. You know what I'm saying? But now that I understand, I didn't understand that at the time. Shout out to everybody, anybody, especially the Rasa. I think they just don't like to see the Rasa make it. And that, that's all it is. That's all it is. I think when it comes to the Rasa and something, and what I was doing, I was doing big dog stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was really doing it. I was really killing it. And that's all it was. You go in my city, I have love. Everywhere. All over my state. Everywhere. You won't find me on no YouTubes. You won't find me on nowhere. Nobody did an interview for me. Nothing. Nothing in my t in my city. It's a lot. It's a lot of love, but it's a lot of hate out there too. You know how many people wanted to kill me at the time? This and that. People don't know that I really looked out in the in the mind. I used to get thousands of messages, bro. We're gonna pull up on you. We're gonna kill you. We're gonna. Hey, G. I'm right here off Six and Central doing giveaways to the homeless. If, that, if today's my day, pull up, G. God bless you. I hope you have a blessed day. You know, and 95 percent of them would be like. Damn, G, I'll I feel stupid for even talking to you like that. And then you had the other five percent guys like, no, nah, we're gonna pull up on you when we have, mm -hmm. pull up on me. I had $150,000 worth of jewelry on, going show to show, walking the streets, still handing flyers. 
Still trying to teach, teach positivity the front of the gate. I did this doing positive. I did do it. I blew up doing being a positive influence to the kids, to everybody, the community. I, I don't need, but I didn't even know it. I was just still so lost in that mentality that like till just now I'm barely like, dude, you really did this, bro. Like what the hell? Because I was so like shell shocked. I don't know what the hell it was. You were just doing it. And then like that, the, the reason why I got into this the, uh, this interview. Shout out Lefty Gunplay, shout out Soles, shout out everybody. They just pulled up to my city. Like, every every artist that pulls up to my city, I'm dr- driving. I have a beautiful uh, Sprinter bus, Mercedes Sprinter bus, and I drive all the artists around and stuff. Uh, I had Peso Peso after party. Uh, D-Baby went to my house. Shout out D-Baby, man. We about to work, too. Mexican OT, all them cats, man. Um, um, and... Uh, Man, man, I, I kind of spaced out what You're I was saying. You're just there. You're just there. For yeah, I was just there. I was just there, but I don't know where. It's just kind of like, like I said, I, I, I just kind of got lost. It's like it's just God works in mysteriously ways, man. And it's like now that I realize it, I'll tell you what it is, man. They're gonna make it hard. Oh yeah, yeah. They're gonna make it. They make it hard for us. That's not. They didn't like it. I don't care what anybody says. They don't like it. And that's what I respect about Lefty Gunplay is that he's doing it. He is who he is, and he's out here just killing it, you know. And to be honest, with you, the only reason why I'm even here is because of Lefty Gunplay because somebody actually slid up on him, and this is when I knew it was the last straw. Somebody slid up on him, and they were calling me a snitch, 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 this and that, and this and that, and that's when I like. Cool, you can call me this, that. I've been, they've been saying that from the gate. You know, I know what the hell I am. I know what I've done. I know how real I kept it from the, you know, from the gate. After that, I gave my life around. But after someone like that, you know, that's, that shit could get me killed. For Especially sure. out here in California on some shit like that. That could get me killed. Mm. So that's when I realized, I said, bro. I gotta go say my story. No, yeah. Like, this is really like, that. they really like do not want you out here. I did nothing but, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ever drop no music videos. I never, nothing. Simply just positively. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just the world in my city or if it's being my rasa or me being rasa, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. And I didn't and I was strong the whole time. And then towards the end, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, like uh, apologies to everybody in my city and everybody out there. Like, I even kind of got like towards the end, because like, you know, I told you who I used to be. You know, like they, I, we were taught shoot first, ask questions later. You know what I'm saying? No questions, you know, no ask no damn questions. And towards the end, I'm I'm a, I was on Instagram I'm like, oh what's up then? Pull up, we could all die today. Like they did exactly what they wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. What? I was about to go back to the I was back mm-hmm. after all this time, I was about to go right back. Yeah. And then I don't know where this was just actually a couple months ago. I had to just like take a step back and look what at are you everything. Doing, G? You fell into their trap. You fell into exactly like you shout out, like I said, man, shout out Lefty Gunplay. I see it happening a lot, a lot, a lot is they, the social media. I'm good in the hood. I'm good in the street. But the social media is what tries, like what's happening to Cat Williams. They try to like, well, for whatever reason, they try to blackball you and push you out of a reason. And then they end up turning you against yourself. And then they even like, even like people that are messaging, people saying this, like, I can go for days of this, like, I, I can talk about it, whatever. But it was just, it was to the point where it's like, I'm still, I'm trying to defend myself. I was, I've been defending myself for years, but I don't know where it was like times a thousand. It was times a thousand blackballed. That's what happened to me. They tried, but for what? I don't sell dope. I all I preach about is hey, like uh, like respect to everybody who does and, and is in the game. You know, respect to everybody. But everybody that I love died off of dope. Mm-hmm. Everybody I love died from dope. My 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 best friend's doing twenty four years right now. My ex girlfriend's doing twelve years right now. Everybody, my 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 brother died. Everybody died off of dope. So that's why I hate it. I hate drugs. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I, hate it. I don't care. I, I look at, I have big dogs that I know. Hey, respectfully, G, that's not what I do. I love you, but hey, I got to stay away from you. Yeah. That's not me no more. That's not me. The, the mota, fuck it, man. Block me in for that shit. Would you? I got lawyer money anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. what they going to do about that shit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But everything else, like, it's just crazy. And they try to, they try to like, it's a little game. It's like, it's like I see it. I see it like in, in, in Lefty Gunplay. When they use it, I want to sit and, and talk down with you. Because I, want, I, want, I wish everybody could know this. I wish. And what happens? I mean, they're getting killed. Look what happened to Nipsey. Look what happened. To, sh- shout out DJ VIP. I just got off the phone with DJ VIP. Uh, Nipsey Hussle's manager. He might be my manager now. This all happened after Lefty Gunplay left my house the other day. I've been quiet for years. I've been quiet for years. Never said nothing. I did what I did. And I feel like I have to. This is it. Uh, 
I, I, you know, I'm 37 years old. I did what I did. Everybody talking all this noise about me. If y'all really, every, if y'all really even knew who the hell I really was as a man and as a person, they would feel stupid for talking down on my name. It's you know? just how it is. You know, you and know, everybody who did, like, shout out to my city and everybody. It, anybody who did call me a rat or say shit, now you know who the rat is because I know I'm not. You know, and, and when a rat calls a rat, and a pre- who's the rat? It, it, they, they, they get out themselves, you know, and that's one thing that I've never played with. Is you, you can call me this, you can call me a bitch, you can call my mama a bitch, you can do whatever the fuck. Don't that call me a rat. Yeah, they, just don't call me no motherfucking <laughs> rat. Because yeah. I know what I did, I know what I did, I know I know how I be my kid, and I know how solid I've kept it my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, with everybody, with of everybody. Course. There's a lot of people that even that I show love that I'm even mad at them right now, because, bro, if you guys really knew how solid I was for you guys, and but, I, but I've just kept it quiet. Yeah, it also don't matter, I'm sick though. of it, I'm sick of it. And this is what, I, you know what, I'm glad we got here. Because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all this hate. I don't know. Let the gunplay. He's opening a lot of opportunities. A lot. I feel like he. I know he's the one breaking the barrier. At least trying. He's trying because they were right. I seen that interview that somebody posted the other day. And who was it that I seen it? That they were like, all right, Lefty Gunplay is gonna be the one to test us. All right. Why is there no Rasas? Either they don't want us in hip hop, or. Or he's he's gonna be the one. He's doing he's he's doing he's doing it right now. He's he's, he's gonna get in it. Or either that they just don't want the for rasa. Sure, for sure. Yeah, that they just don't want the rasa. So, I'm not even trying to cut you off. No, yeah, or go ahead. anything. You know what I'm saying? But I think you should share that with your next interview. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because this is strictly, you know, about okay. your experience, yeah. you, what you've overcame, uh, you know, where you're at now. And obviously, you know, we know what you you told us that, you know, you want to rap, yeah. that you rap, that you've been rapping. Mm-hmm. And this is just basically to tell us your Indicted experience, TV. what yeah. you've been through, the insight, what being. you've overcome. Yeah. And now you're like, fuck everything. Yeah. You're going to get it. Yeah. And that's where that's you're at, where right, I'm now. at right now. And yeah. I am so grateful yeah. that yeah. you want to come on that you came on my platform that you know to share and open up and help you open up man. shit that you want to yeah, fucking it, say that yeah, you know fucking hell right yeah, fuck these fools yeah, and is it, man. you know what I'm saying that you ready yeah you I'm know? beyond ready I've been ready my whole life but it's just like I've been quiet you know, but I mean, hey, quiet. you're not crying no more. Yeah. You came on and died yeah. it. You told us what you went through, what you've overcome, some crazy shit that you've overcome within yourself that you're still I working on. a lot on. of stories too, you know? but yeah, I'm still working on But it's on okay. It. But it's okay because yeah. you know them. Yeah. And you've shared the most important things that have to come out of you. Yeah. You know? And I appreciate it too. No, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, like, 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 let me take it back a little bit, like with the story. Like, remember I told you how I flipped my Yukon? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember what happened, how I got out. How I got out or nothing. And one day, like, I've been doing a lot of healing, like, like herbal healing and stuff like that. And then one day I was telling this, this chick the story of how I, how I, uh, how I, how I beat my, or how I flipped my Yukon. And this is the only time I ever seen it. I don't know if it was God just working with me, but I was telling her the story. And right when I got to that point where I told you that I got, I flipped out, I seen it. I don't, know, I don't, I don't even remember what I seen, but I seen it. And I'm sitting here telling this girl I seen it and I just freaking, <sighs> It like hit like a nervous part, like 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 a memory in me, and that's what I'm going through right now. It's like I'm barely healing from that. I'm barely coming back to it's life. Exciting. Even my memory that's is right. coming back, that's and it's right. it's a beautiful thing. It's and it will, thing. you know, everything takes Understanding. time. Understanding, and it's not on our time. It's whenever God gives you that time to, you know, whenever God does it. It's not when we want. It's when it's ready. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that's, again, that's really, that's really, that's really thank you it. for yes. sharing on my channel. Yes, yes, yes. Is there anything that you want to share that you haven't shared that, you know, pertains to your term, you know, what you overcame, a little something that you haven't shared? Um, Man, that's really before, it. You know, before we close? That's really just it, man. Just, uh, you know, just the game, man. The understanding, the beauty, and the, and the, and the evil of it, man. Uh, you know, like... Man, to everybody in the game, bro, like shit, get out as quick as you can. You know, the the, the streets ain't the same no more, man. It ain't the, hey, I don't even think the streets are alive no more. You know, it's it's not it's not what it used to be no more. Not you at know, all. at all, at all, at all no more. It's not even like, shh, there's no moralities. I don't know what it's like. Do you guys got politics out here? Out there is is there's no politics. That's why people can say what they say about me out there because nobody's nobody's shutting them down. You know, got it, but got it. Just really that, man. It's just that you know, like get it and get out, man, and just. Best <laughs> As best if you could If you yeah, could You know man. If you make it out Get it and get out If you do Yeah Cause if you know you That's either out. you make it Or you don't I was able to do it I was one of the few I was one of the few That was able to do it man And uh I'm, I'm uh, we, don't, we don't I don't know what's You know To come still You know But I know that I'm just Gonna keep grinding And keep chasing Every day That's it Never give up man that's Keep right. chasing your dream yeah. Every day Yeah Every day Well again dream. thank you 
Thank you for coming. Yes, Lucky. Ma'am. Yeah. Thank Again, you. Again, guys, Appreciate don't forget to me. like, share, and subscribe, and follow oh, us my, on my Instagram. Oh, my Instagram, King Lucky, K I N G L U C K I I I. King yeah, Lucky. no, we're That's... definitely going to plug all oh, your. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, going to tag yeah, you. Yeah. We're going to put it on the YouTube yeah. channel, on everything. Yeah, we got you, Lucky. Don't worry. Appreciate you. Yeah, bro. we got you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, guys. <laughs>